Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everybody is well. Let me look at here, man. Make sure I did this right. Yeah, I did it. I did it right. 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 All right. What's going on, man? Boxing fans. Look, look, man. First things first. Oh, let me hit this mute. Actually, I put second things first. Let me hit that mute on that. All right. So i um, going to mention this throughout the chat. There was a young man that was very seriously injured uh, a couple days ago. And we sent a lot of support from the channel to him because, you know, basically, I'm not going to say who it is. I'm not going to say it's related to just letting you know that. And also the money's already been donated, um, already been donated. Uh, but it's something that usually, you know, it's something really that was really serious as a young man um, who had an accident playing baseball and lost a kidney lost his spleen and you know was very very seriously injured obviously uh in a in a sporting accident so we donated a thousand dollars to uh the gofundme uh so every once in a while and it's very you know un rare situations that i will we will do that for the channel but it was significant enough where you know i'm not sure whether the parents had the insurance or, you know, what was, you know, the, but the, you know, they had basically trying to raise, you know, that's a lot of the medical bills are going to be huge. So, you know, even though a thousand dollars, not a left, not a lot, um, it's relative to whatever the, to the bills that will come from having to have emergency kidney surgery and emergency surgery on your spleen and the recovery we donated. So if you guys, everything that you guys donate to the channel today, through the conversations, um, it's basically going to them, but I've already given the money. I've already given the money. So if you feel like helping, that'd be great. If you don't, because, you know, it may turn around where we wind up having to do it again. If, you know, if it doesn't cover, if it doesn't cover up for them. But like I said, it's a special circumstance, um, where I know that the injury was valid. Like it's a real, real thing. It's not something where, you know, somebody's trying to scam or something like that. Cause a lot of times on YouTube, people try to scam. This is verified. This is a very, very real thing. I had met the young man, know the young man, excellent young man, you know, very respectful young man. And it's just something really, really bad to happen. So uh, I have, that's why I have that today. I have that up there because I'm going to try to do whatever I can do to try to help those guys, you know, out of their, um, their situation. And we got a donation banks to bank. Thank you, brother, for that fifth, that $50 holiday. That's huge. Thank you, sir. And the pullout bandit with the, with the $20 donation. That's big. So thank you very much. So just to let you know, we're going to work and work and work and work. And when I get to that thousand, then I'm going to put that thousand, I'm probably going to put the thousand back in, um, back in there on them and just, you know, and check. But like I already said, we already put the money up, already did it no pressure, but that's what I'm talking about. So if I'm arguing with you, I'm debating with you, you know, we're doing it for a cause. We're going to probably going to be doing it for a cause for the next few days. Cause you know, money is enough. Deeds is even more, man. Cal cool is so big with the hundred dollar holler, brother. Oh, that's huge. That's huge, brother. Thank you for this more. Thank you for chipping your hat. Thank, thanks for chipping in, man. Thanks for chipping in. That's, that's huge. It's so huge, Cal. And Cal Cool, let me tell you, man. People don't know Cal Cool it. Man, Cal Cal Cool it is man, Cal Cool it is um Cal Cool it is one of the biggest sponsors along with David Williams that you could ever pray for, man. You could ever pray for. You know what I mean? Guys that really 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 support, guys that are really not you know, that are just seriously, man, seriously. Thank you guys for everything you do in my life and it is beautiful that we can you know, we got to sometimes, you know, because it's like, it's just such a tragic thing. Kid is, you know, I'm pretty sure I have a suspicion he's on his way. He's on his way to college next year. And with the injuries that he has, he probably won't be able to play college sports. And it's it's just tragic, man. 
It was, but again, he's alive and that's a beautiful thing. But, you know, when I get, you know, he's a good young man, good young man, good young man, very good young man. Um, and to the, and much support, I'm not going to depress everybody all day. I'm not going to keep talking about it, but I just want to let you know. And my guy, Marquis said contribution. Thank you, man. Thank you, brother, for that. Barbara Davis said medical expense donation. Thank you for the $25 holler. Thank you. And yesterday there was, um, I missed a, a cash app yesterday from Gianna yesterday at 1130. She, she had a $25 holler. Thank you so much, Gianna. Get uh, G Louise. G Louise. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to be cooking on extra flame too. Cause trust me, I'm going to, from the support you guys give, I'm going to cook on extra flame. Okay. I am. Cause I've been pulling punches on certain cats and I'm not probably not going to pull punches anymore. I, 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 I feel, I realize, dude, that it's, um, it can't keep happening. Hey, Kenneth, Kenneth Johnson with the huge support. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you so much, man. Thank you. And again, I've already donated the money. Once I get another thousand, then I'm going to probably, I'm going to check and then I'm going to do another thousand provided I know where everything is. Um, but thank you guys for helping me help this family. Thank you guys for helping me help this family. Um, and I can definitely, if you guys need to show, I can already show you the proof that I already gave the $1,000. Um, Jay Mill said, blessings, Mr. Martin. Glory to God for his mercy and healing of that child and for the comfort and the strength of their family. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's a terrific kid. Terrific kid. Like super great sense of humor. Super great sense of humor. Um, uh, respectful young man. You know, always has always this always, sir, just a just an absolutely terrific kid, man, liked by everybody that, that everybody that I know that knows him. Um, Lamarcus Robinson in the building. Thank you, brother, for that twenty dollar holler, man. Thank you for that support, man. Thank you for supporting him. And uh, Oglesby, uh, Tawanda Oglesby said ten dollars for the medical expenses. Thank you so much. As you know, we live in a world where it's tough. Mr. A Scarface says, salute for God bless you and your fam with the $5 holler. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you much. Thank you. And Eric Young with the $20 holler, brother. Thank you so much. Again, man, going to everybody. May this return to you a million fold. May it return to you a million fold. And then uh, D Hayes said, a blessings for now for the family. Yes, sir. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna get a thank you note from the family to everybody for sure. Um from our community to their community to their family. And again, like I said, it's not no no scam. No scam. This is it's already been donated. It's already as soon as we heard as like, yeah, I know there's a lot of people out there. Man, it's tough. All right, so let's get into this, man. Let's get into this conversation, this boxing conversation. And thank you guys so much for the support. Really and truly. And you guys are real blessings in my life. And I want to also let people know, man, look, um, Devin Haney's a great kid. I think he's a great kid. And I don't think, and I want people to understand, man, when I talk about Devin Haney and these Gervonta Davis chickens uh, coming home to roost, that that's what it is. It's these Gervonta Davis chickens coming home to roost, man. This is not, this is a, a phenomenal show. Thank you, Fi. Thank you, Fi. Appreciate you, man. For my hey man, thank you. Thank you, Fi. You was on KO channel cooking. Hey man, hey, he kicked me off. KO Boxy kicked me off, man. <laughs> KO Boxy cooked me, kicked me off, man. He kicked me off, dog. He said, Man, nah, nah, you gotta go, dog. Key, hey, Key, you saw that? Y'all saw him kick, you saw him kick me off. I just want to let y'all know. You saw did you see KO kick me off last night? KO's like, nah, man, nah, because dog, I was bad, dog. I'm telling you. See, that's why I love BFTB, man. See, y'all gotta understand this, man. That's why I, that's why I rock with BFTB. That's why people keep saying, like, man, you BFTB. No, I will never, I'm never gonna debate him. Because who else is gonna whoop your ass like that? You need BFTB in your life to whoop your ass like that. Because <laughs> dog, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not going to take a subject where I know God dang well I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> Just to rub your face? 
You about to spill the beans? Man, I was about to, man. Hey, man. Hey, Noob, look, I'm telling you, man, because it's a skill set. It's a skill set. It's a skill. I keep trying to tell you it's a skill set. It's a, hey, man, much love. Uh, Nicole, thank you, said, for the health expenses. Thank you, sister. I can't show you this because this is in white with the $10 holler from Nicole. Nicky, for the health expenses. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Yeah, anyway, I just want to let you know, if you ever see me throw, unceremoniously throw, kick KO Boxing off my channel was pay, as payback for last night. On the real note, because he was going to, because dog, seriously, man. Now, on to some other niggas biting my stuff. Dog, I saw, I saw you biting my shit now. I was about to click that link, dog. I'm just going to let you know. I was about to come get that. I, I don't, 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 don't wave that in my face now. Don't wave that in my face. Because I will take the bet. Don't wave it in my face, partner. Don't wave it in my face. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You how hey, you see how they was on Twitter saying Devin at 25 would mop Floyd at 25? Who said that? I would never click the link. I'm just joking. Hell no. No, no. You guys say, like I said, man, I'm not trying to step on nobody's toes. Man, don't steal my shit. Hey, man, don't buy my shit now. Uh, anyway. He said, I love how OG been going on other folks' channels. Am I, I love that energy? Yeah, I just went on a couple masks. I'm only going on people's show I like, man. I like KO Boxing. I'll go on there for a quick second. You know what I mean? I like talking to I like, yeah, I like talking to people. They be they they be just like you for now, man. Just stop stealing my shit, man. Damn. <laughs> Damn, don't steal my shit like that, dog. <laughs> just be snatching my shit. God, dog, man. Thank you, Noop. Fine, Noop. Y'all don't understand about them noobs. Y'all don't understand about them noobs. I'm going to say that till, hey, I'm going to say that till I die. Y'all don't understand about them noobs. Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't think you see for them. For, that's black society right here. Okay, this is black society right here. This is black culture right here. But you know who gets, who gets worse raps? The, a bunch of people that are not, why you guys got to act Greek? Why do you got to have Greek letters? Man, are you kidding me? We got hundreds of thousands of educated, employed, constructive people that are proudly black with black kids taking care of business on a day-to-day -day basis in every field of human endeavor. And y'all think that we, something's fucking wrong with us? Dude, you kidding me? You should want your kids to be a noob. You should, well, I don't know. Some of y'all may not want your sons to be, hey, man, you may want to keep your daughters away. But that said, man, you should want your kids to be noobs, alphas and Qs and sigmas. You should want that shit for your kids, your daughters to be AKs and deltas and zetas, right? You should want sigma, gamma, rows, all of that. That's what you want because you know for sure these kids, get you. to get it, you got to go to school. To get it, you got to be trying to aim at something. The percentage of the people that you know taking care of business goes way the fuck up, okay? It goes way the fuck up, way up, all right? That's the goal, homie. That's the goal. What you need, what you need the Crips for when you got the noops? <laughs> for real, what you need the Bloods for when you got the noops and the Qs and the Alphas? That's what you need. That's what you need. That's what we need. Don't get hung up on the Greek letters, nigga. You speak English. You speak English complaining about somebody with a Greek letter. Why you got English letters in your name? We got Greek. It's a Greek letter for the same reason your name is spe spelled in English. That man said prison city noops. I'm just trying to tell you, man. Y'all just don't understand, man. Y'all don't get it. You don't get it. He said facts, five. Exactly. They don't even get it. Like, they don't get it. They don't get it. I tried to explain it to him one time, man. I'm highly upset I never played. Shake my head. I was busy with college basketball. College basketball is the same thing, though, black parent. It's a brotherhood. The black, the basketball team's a brotherhood, too. It's the same thing. You're in college. You're being productive. You're in the military. You're being productive. The only places you ain't being productive, I don't shit, you can go straight into the Masons and be productive. 
You want to be you just want everybody to be constructive and be productive and take care of their own business and be in a position where if you need them and it's truly that you can show need that you have people that can help you. You know what I mean? They don't owe you shit, but they can help you if you need it. You know what I mean? Medical school, all of that shit, man. Anyway, like I said, I'm like highly I, I'm listening to guys like Rollo, like and you dudes jumping on here like what the what it. What the fuck, dude? Like, for real? <laughs> like, for real? You got to understand why y'all sometimes y'all hear me talk to dudes like that so bad. Like, I talk to Rollo bad. Because I think bad about that shit. Somebody said Noob City Crips. Noob Street Crips. What? There are definitely Noob Crips, though. There's Noob GDs for sure. Definitely noob GDs. Pledge and pledge the GD. Pledge a couple GDs. But anyway, <laughs> Rollo sent me that application. Oh, did he? <laughs> well, he sent you an application. So his uh anyway, I'll leave it alone. Anyway. Marcus Priest said, Hey, thank you, man. Great shows all week. Mr. Priest, thank you, sir. And I had a disagreement with Mr. Priest. I appreciate you, Mr. Grease. They definitely noob GDs for sure. There's noob GDs for sure. Definitely noob GDs. Uh, uh, that man's yeah, yeah, you a hey, double zero like you know may know may act like he got <laughs> may act like he may know personally. Um, Savage Block Uno in the building. Thank you, man. Forty cents or fifty cents, basically a fifty dollar holler for the medical expenses. Thank you, brother, for helping helping us cover that up. You know, take care of that. For this young man, we do. We almost 10, man. We well into a chunk of the thank you, brother. Barbara Davis' sister said $25 for the to help with the medical expenses. Thank you, sister. For sure, for sure, for sure. What happened to frequent? Uh, frequent ran off because then look, let me hear. Let me let's get back to this for a second. Uh, Stoudemire said, Fanon, do you feel you have the best chat in all of YouTube? I think so. I, yeah, I'm from Chicago, EZ. I don't know, man, if I have the best chat because you guys are all in all their kind of people's chats. I don't own you. I Do I think I have the best? No, I'm just happy. I'm not gauging you. I don't own y'all. <laughs> like, I don't own y'all. Like, for real. Like, I appreciate Hey, Tim and Stoudemire, I'm going to give you an honest question to that. To that. I so badly do not want to fuck up my relationship with you guys that I will never even claim myself for you to be me. I don't own you. If I fuck up, y'all are gone, okay? If I screw up, y'all are gone. If I start lying, if I start aiming for the sky, if I start acting like I own you and you can't go where you want it, now, man, I'm going to lose people right away. I'm not, <laughs> dog, I don't know. I think y'all are great people. I appreciate y'all very, very much, and I appreciate you allowing me to be me. That's that's all. That's the only thing I can say that dude, you like I like I tried to tell Kyle the other day, dog, I'm not going to do never. Don't try to gas me up. OK, hey, don't ever gas me. I'm never gassing myself up. I don't think y'all man. Hey, I pray. Thank you, YouTube. I think YouTube's got the best platform. You know what I'm saying? But I see some people, man, they get they man, They got some nice followings. And he fucked them off. Playing games. Not saying that they can't get their following back. Not saying it can't, can't, and not saying that, you know, that anybody dead in the water. I'm just saying. Look, man, I done seen some people blow it, you know, for no good A, for no good reason. Hey, for the medical expenses. Hey, thank you, Big Dre, yesterday. Thank you, Big Dre. You know what I mean? Thank you, Big Dre. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Big Dre. Hey, hey, come on. Okay, hey, hey, here you go, brother. Here you go, brother. Here you go. 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 Here you go, sir. KOD testimonies. Here you go, brother. All right, I'm going to do this. I, I got you. Let me go check this channel, though. I should have checked the channel first. Got to be disciplined about it. Oh, come on, man. You just made this. Come on, man. Don't kill me, dog. Man, don't play with me, man. Let me see if your face is on here. Uh, 
All right, KOD testimonies, bro. You got. All right, I'll let you on there, man. Please don't play with that wrench, bro. Okay, please don't play with that wrench. Oh, man, that's huge. Thank you so much. Wow. Big time. Big time. I think it's coming through. Disagreement equal hate. Uh Oh, disagreement equal hate. Love all, bro. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, Marcus Priest. Again, thank you, sir. And then, oh, Aisha, huge for the medical expenses. The $50 holler from Miss Aisha for the medical expenses. Thank you, sister. And Mr. Edmonds said, a little help for the young man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Miss, Miss Keisha. Thank you, Miss Keisha. Thank you, Miss Keisha. All right, I got your KOD testimony. Please don't use that wrench in any type of way that's going to make me regret it. No joke, because you just made that channel up in November of 2023. So I remember a KOD testimonies, but that channel's not that old. Okay? So I'm just going to tell you, it's a short leash, okay? It's a short leash, bro, because I have a suspicion. I, I have a worry, not a suspicion. I have a worry, not a suspicion. Anyway, but I, all right, look, man, and you're asking for it, which is makes me feel kind of funny about it. All right, so look, um, man, thank you, brother, for that $2. Hey, man, thank you, Mr. Warren, for your for your donation to the cause. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see you, Mr. Warren. Thank you, brother. That's big time. Thank you. All right, so let's, okay, thank you, KOD Testimonies, because I've definitely, you must, you must have got a new channel or something, because I've seen you for a long time, but that channel was just made. Um. So, yeah, hit that like button. Big, yeah, thank you. So look, let's get into this. Um. Your boy took a big bot, man. Your boy's tickets ain't selling, man. And hey, what's going on, man? Thank you, man. Thank you, Mr. Lattimore. Thank you, brother. It's $20 holler for the medical expenses. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the appreciate. Thank you. Appreciate you greatly, 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 greatly. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What up, King of Kings? I'm chilling, brother. Um, I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. Let me see something. Yeah, okay, cool. Thank you, Mr. Lattimore. Thank you, sir. All right, so look, man, here's the title of the video. Javante Davis, chickens coming home to roost. Uh, Ryan Garcia, huge allegations, and Devin Haney fans running mad. Uh, all over Twitter, De uh, Bill Haney, um, Devin Haney's team kind of messed up. And it was kind of what I was alluding to. Look, man, they, they got to settle down, man. They, and they're doing being done very, very wrong by, by Ryan Garcia. Dude, I keep asking people and talking to people about this fight and whether they're going to this fight and what they uh, and do. The answer is almost is almost a complete and resounding no. Did you hear the the guy, the um one dude it was a new caller? Um, you may have noticed him because he had significantly less pigment pigment in his skin than I did. Um, and he was saying, look, I'm an MMA guy. And. Didn't you abort them? No. <laughs> Hey, man, he's out there. They out there getting body bad, bro. They're out there getting body bad. They out there bad. Real, real, real bad. Real bad. Real, you guys out there bad. And you guys keep coming by my live, my Twitter talking. You guys are out there bad. But it's time to change and move in the right direction. It's good time right now to move in the right direction. You can't have two bad guys in a promotion. You can't have two bad guys in a, in a promotion. For the black community, you can't be a bad guy with the black community fighting a guy from the Mexican community. You can't. That's a bad guy. That's a bad guy on a bad guy matchup. That's the black hat and the black hat. People don't buy black hat, black hat versus black hat. And honestly, white hat and white hat you know, they is more likely to buy two guys that you actually like fight one another. Kind of like Gervonta and Frank Martin. That's kind of a fight where it's like, hey, man, there may not be a lot of energy for the fight. Like, you know, ex like beyond normal type of energy for the fight. 
because it hasn't been announced yet, but there's not anybody shitting on the fight saying, look, man, this shit isn't even worth watching. Ryan Garcia is doing such a disservice to Devin because he's not actually talking about beating him up. You got to start talking about beating him up. Nobody thinks Ryan is going in there to beat him up. He just started talking about beating him up yesterday. Before he was sitting there talking about his Lord and Savior. You know what I mean? Dog, really, a lot of times, man, people don't believe you're a savage if you talk about your Lord and Savior. You know what I mean? Maybe you're like you're a warrior against the devil. Ryan Garcia is far. I mean, Javante Davis is not. Medical expenses, everything uh, okay, big dog. Everything's okay with me. Everything's okay with my family. But there's a young man. There's a young man uh, that I know that um, it was seriously, seriously injured in an accident in a baseball game. And he ran into he ran into a pole and he lost his kidney. And he lost his spleen in an emergency, had to have an emergency operation for his kidney and his spleen to, and had those removed. So it was very, 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 very tough. Man, that's huge. Man, thank man. So deep, brother. And that's my brother from another mother right there said for the purpose. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nevi. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's big. That's huge. And it's and it is no joke. It's important. And anybody wants, I've already given the money. I've already given, I've already donated the, the thousand dollars from the channel. Already did it. So more than likely, I'm, I'm just keeping pace. May have to do it again. If you know, and it's a black family too. And the fact that they went straight, like the day after it happened, they went to GoFundMe. It's like, man, you know, obviously they, you know, they're they're scared and going through what they're going. But I'm like, for you to go to GoFundMe that fast, you're you're really you're talking about somebody that doesn't have adequate medical care, right? To go to go to GoFundMe that fast, that's that's somebody that does not have that doesn't have that because they're not talking about their deductible with the type of money that they have to raise. So thank you so much. Um, before the mental breakdown, man, I thought you were talking about me for a second there, Richard Brado. <laughs> hey, he said, hey, Fanon, even before the mental breakdown, I was on the fence on buying this fight. I think Ryan isn't too serious about boxing. At least, it, it at least seems that way. Well, I'm going to, let me be very clear. I'm going to buy the fight, Richard Brado. I'm going to buy the fight. And I say, man, I think we should buy the fight. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. But this fake it till you make it stuff is not, it's, it's not going to work, bro. The fake it to the make it is really it's really backfiring. Something heavy. But don't worry, they're going to lie about the numbers. But here's the problem. Whatever numbers you give, people are going to think you lied about. That's the other side of it. And I and one thing that, and I'm sorry if I'm going to refry these beans, but dude, like I told you, I was listening and thinking about when, when you guys were asking questions of Bill. I didn't ask questions of Bill. You all asked ask questions of Bill. So it wasn't me. Don't blame me. Okay? Don't blame me. Barbara, you're so cute. Man, Barbara, thank you so much. With another 50. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. You are such a beautiful person. Thank you so much. $50 more to help. Thank you. Thank you. Because you know if they go to, they go to, Barbara, you know if they go to GoFundMe right after the accident, then that is your medical expenses. That means that's your medical expenses. I had, um, man, there's a friend I went to law school that passed away with not too long ago. They had a GoFundMe. And I'm like, she's an entertainment lawyer. And she has a GoFundMe. And I'm like, and she wound up passing away. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. She wound up passing away like, I man, I want to say like two days later. But that, but that money was really about, man, I'm telling you, man, this the medical system we have in the United States is so there's no reason for this there's no reason for people to have to go broke and lose everything that they have and then pass away and go to die in debt bill only wanted to talk to the chat to keep you from cooking him and you still cooked him oh because he talked shit so i brought him up and i cooked him again that's only because he was talking shit that's it he's just talking shit so i had to do it again 
And plus, what he was doing was he was trying to let the conversation go six hours so people forget about it. So I had to remind it a couple times. But I didn't mean there was no ill will there. You know what I'm saying? There was no ill will there for me. And there still, there still isn't any ill will. Um, Phoenix, the assassin, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you for the support, brother. Thank you so much, man. I'm going to show the receipt, too. I'm going to show the receipt so you guys see. Just so you see, because I don't want anybody, anybody, because people bite what I do, so I'm going to pull up this receipt. I'm going to pull up this receipt. I'm, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to block out some of the stuff. Here, let me see. I'm going to try to, um, I'm going to actually show you the receipt because I don't want any questions with this. Oh, actually, I think I can do it here. Let me, I'm, I'm going to be a hundred percent on board. And if anybody asks you this on their channel, cause people would be some lion sacks of shits. Okay. Um, they should be able to do what I'm about to do right here, which is why I said I was going to, which is why I said that I, uh, what is it? It's called GoFundMe. I wonder if I got that on my. Where is it? What's it? It's March, right? So where's my GoFundMe? Uh, oh, okay, that's why. All right, here you go. Here you go. All right, I can show this. I think I can show this. Yeah, because you know my name. Let me make sure there's nothing in here. All right, so here's it. I'm going to show you what I did so you guys know for sure it was already done. I don't want you guys, anybody to think that I'm a, a scamming you. I wouldn't scam you. But other people will scam you, so they should be able to do this. I don't think there's anything personal here. As you can see, it says, thank you for your $1,000 donation. Rally behind the Welshes. Help me with med help with medical costs. Here's your donation receipt. My name is Martin Blackwell. Donation yesterday. GoFundMe. I tipped GoFundMe $170. The donation will be received by, I probably shouldn't have put her name there, but it, it's okay, um, by Julie Hopkins. Uh, and the tip amount was 170 The total amount was $1,170. Your donation will appear on your statement as GoFundMe rally behind. So I just want to let you know that I'm not, I'm not scamming you when I said that I already did it, okay? That's, and, I, and I didn't, I would not have said it or talked about it if I had not already done it. If we and it's from my and it's from Fanon International Boxing, I already did it. Just letting you know. But you can come on here illegally and get everything bought and paid for. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you can come here illegally. The case, okay. I just want to let you know that that's what I'm telling you, man. I'm not I'm not conning you when I say that there is a young man that is in serious, serious, serious need. OK. Slogan said, if is not scamming you, he's not associated with Rallo. Yeah, no, nah, not doing that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> not doing that. Hey, say Daniel Gallimore said, hey, I wish I had more to give. Prayers to a young man and the wishes. If you don't have anything good, if you don't have if you can't support, just throw out positive energy for him. Just throw out positive energy for, for the young man. That's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Just all you got to do, you don't even got to know the man's, you ain't got to even know his name. All you got to do is like, whoever this young man is, I just want to give my, my positive energy. I want, I want you to be in a beautiful position in your life. I want you, you're going to get through this, you know? Hey, as we said, we take it face value for now. We believe it. Yeah, but don't. Don't, I never ask y'all to take me at face value. I don't need it. You know what I'm saying? And I say that with all due respect, with more than, with every bit of respect that you believe you deserve. 
I don't, I don't need you to ever take me at face value. I'm going to no. If I say something about contracts, I'm willing to sit down here with any attorney you bring on and talk about it. People used to be like, oh, you're faking, you're lying, you're lying. Okay. When I body your favorite councilman over or your favorite counselor, then you'll know I'm not lying. You'll know I'm not lying. When you accuse me of something, I will tell you what my name is. My name is Martin Blackwell. My name is Martin Blackwell. So you know that I did not do what Fanon Hancock, somebody accused a guy named Fanon, Fanon Hancock of doing. Uh, Mastermind, the link is just in the cash app or super chat. I already gave the money. So the super chat works like no joke. Super, I know YouTube takes a per portion, but I don't care. Okay. I do not care. <laughs> I do not care. I'm perfectly fine with that, with YouTube taking the money. We're taking their, their cut. I don't care. You know, I would just, I'd want a lot of positive energy. There's definitely a lot of money to donate and I may have to do it again. You know what I mean? I may have to do it again. The if I have to do it again and I do it, I'm not going to, I won't do this again. You know what I mean? If I have to do it again, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it out of my savings. I'm going to do it out of my checking. I'm going to do it myself. And I wouldn't mention it again if it's something where it winds up being like, okay, this needs to happen again. You know? But I wouldn't, I'm not going to say anything about it again. But I wouldn't say anything about it again. Um, but I'm just letting you know it's already done. So don't feel any pressure. The money's already the money's already with them. They already got it. You know what I mean? Um, but the cash app, either the cash app or the super chat works. But look, let's get back on this. I want to talk about this thing though, about this this chickens coming home to roost thing. Okay. Do you remember when Bills was talking to um Tim, 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 Rick Tims? Do you remember the cut? See, this is what happened. This is this is for you, boxing hacker. This is what you do by running your mouth back, boxing hacker. I was gonna leave it alone. I was gonna leave it alone. Then I listened to what Bill actually said too when he was talking with Rick Timms. And there was something that really struck me. He said to Rick Timms, well, you know, it's possible. So you don't know whether I could, whether I could or I couldn't have gotten out of that rematch clause with George Cambosis. Do you remember he said that? Do you remember he said that? Think about this for a second. And this is connected to, I don't need, I don't want you to take my word for anything. Don't I don't I don't want you to take my word from for anybody. Here's the thing. The one person for sure that knew the answer to that question was Bill Haney. Bill Haney was the one that knew the answer to the question, but he wouldn't answer the question. Why won't you answer the question, Bill? You don't have to tell me the answer to the question. Just answer for me if you wouldn't mind. Why you won't answer that question? Why do you want us to hang on the possibility that you could have or you couldn't have? The best thing that he could he said was, you just can't prove that I lied. That is a very weak position to take. If you were talking to your son or your daughter, and they say, you said, Look, young man, LaMarcus Robinson, Mr. Robinson called me. And he said that he saw you steal a bike out of his backyard. He said he saw it. He said he saw you. He said, what do you mean that he, he saw me? He said he saw you. He said he saw you. Where did he see me? He saw me, you walk past his house. The bike was in the backyard. He went away. He came back. He saw the bike. And he, then he saw you leaving. And he saw you riding the bike down the street. 
Well, did he know what bike it was? Well, I don't know. Well, go ask him. Did he really see the bike? Because if he didn't see me on the bike, if he didn't see me on his bike and he couldn't see me on his bike, how do you know it wasn't a different bike? Son, was it a different bike? I'm not saying it was a different bike. I'm just saying he can't prove it. So what you're telling me is that I'm asking you, did you take his bike or not? He can't prove it. What are you going to think? What would a reasonable person take from that? That you stole the bike and you just hanging on the idea that he can't prove it. Because you think you did such a good job of stealing the bike. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, dude. I like Southpaw Branson, but dude, you gotta stop, you gotta stop the commercials. I don't do commercials for anybody. Southpaw can always come on the channel anytime he wants. I would prefer if he didn't talk about religion because that really does piss people off. But he can always come to the chat himself, man. I don't do I don't do commercials for people. I don't get I don't ask people to do commercials for me and I don't do commercials for other people. I'm just telling you, you do that pretty consensus. You do that pretty consistent, Branson. And I'd appreciate if you wouldn't do it. Southpaw is more than welcome to come to the channel anytime. Southpaw has my phone number. He he allow him to use my video. If I have video he wants to use on his on his videos, he calls and he asks me. And I always say yes. In fact, as long as he's not dissing me, he never even has to ask. But he always asks. But so there's no more need to do that. Because I don't do that. I don't do that. People used to do that with Champ Side. I asked them to stop doing it. If I'm not going to do that for Champ Side, I'm not going to do that for them. You know what I mean? You can always jump on, man. You can. He can always jump on. But thank you very much. Um, And please don't do that to anybody else's chat for me. Okay? Don't don't do it cuz I don't appreciate when people start shitting in my name on other channels. Anyway, so isn't that pretty interesting? That that answer is, I mean, so you don't really know if I was lying or not. Well, if I didn't know before, I know now. If I didn't know before, I know now, or let me put it this way, I believe it now. I don't know it, but I believe it. I don't know if my wife is going to come home this afternoon, but I believe it. And he didn't duck the question. You can't duck that question. Because remember, Tim's talking to the audience. Yeah, for now, please don't allow religious talk like anyone. That shit turned ugly. Many started turning on each other. I didn't like. Yeah, please don't talk about religion on the channel. Unless it's me. I'm going to talk about whatever I want to talk about. I ain't going to lie, dog. If I feel if I feel like I want to talk about it. But I already know what mine is. I know what mine is. And there's nothing I would ever say that was bad about Islam. Number one, I don't understand Islam well enough to make a comment on it. I was raised Christian. I know plenty about that. I know well enough to know that the people that act like they know it the best don't know it well. And I don't really, you know, I don't really, I don't want to say I don't care about the Bible, but I don't need it. And I know that may offend a lot of Christians, but I don't need it. Like, I don't need it. And, I, and early on, I figured that, I figured that. Like, you know what? I am not going to base my belief and love of God on the Bible. I'm not going to do it because people weaponize it too much. And it's too many petty, petty debates about it. If I can understand without it, I think I'm better off. I think I'm better off. I don't want to have a bunch of conversations with people for five hours about what it says in Isaiah and Deuteronomy. I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to spend the next 60 years memorizing it. And then having debates about which version of the Bible, which word is, I don't want to do that. Because I should be able to find God. If you, if God is what you say it is, I should be able to look at these words on this piece of paper and I should be able to find God right here. You should be able to throw grass in the air and see God. And I you should, sit for real, you should be able to throw grass in the air, watch it float around and be able to see God in that. 
And the truth of God should be indisputable from what you from the grass you see flying in the air. If he is omnipresent and all knowing. Or she is. Or it or not it is. You see what I'm saying? But anyway. Uh, God, good morning, Fanon. Go easy on them. Oh, I will. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not. On oh, what's happening, Rewin was worshiping that ice that had a lettuce. Oh, man, I don't remember that, man. That's funny. Here's this link, though. No, I used to hoop. I used to hoop like everybody else, like in the parks and stuff. I wasn't very good. You know, I can handle my own on a very, very amateur level, but as soon as I got anywhere near anybody that was halfway decent, shit was over. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, nah, man. Nah. I mean, I could play a little bit, but, you know, there ain't no way in the world. My son. Hey, Williams. Hey, I got a Williams. I can't play the tape right now, dog, till somebody come up with, you know, somebody bet me that I can't come up with at least 22 unanswered punches. No, I'm not a shooter. No, I mean, I can shoot a little bit. No, nah, man, look, I was more of a bully. I was more of a bully. Oh, no, I was a bully. I slapped the shit out you on the basketball court. I'll hack the shit out you. I was a little big man is what I was. <laughs> I was somebody that, dog, if you had somebody want to start a fight on a court, I was going to start a fight every single time. I had anger issues. I had basketball anger issues. <laughs> No, I was not a dribbler. I was not a shooter. I was a bully. I was seriously, I was a bully. That's the best I could do is block somebody out, grab a rebound, hand it off to somebody else, you know, go up court. I could shoot every once in a while. I wasn't no real basketball. I could dribble with my right. I got a little better towards the end when I decided to, oh, let me learn how to dribble. I, then I started being able to dribble a little bit. But no, nah, man, I wasn't a basketball player like that. Uh, for the cause, thank you, Kyle Porter. Nah, I'm, I wasn't like that, bro. Yeah, that was, yeah, I definitely had. You gonna, oh no, somebody, I mean, because they had a bet going on, a 500 to 100. Man, I gave 500 to a five. <laughs> oh my God, David Williams, man, so huge, bro. Thank you, sir. David Williams, thank you, man, for tossing that in the hat. David Williams, you are the man. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Dog, thank you, sir. One of the biggest, one of the biggest supporters that there is on for YouTube Boxing Talk is David Williams. Without a doubt. One of the biggest supporters you could ever hope for. No joke, man. David Williams, he's supporting heavy, man. He keeps the shit going. He keeps the shit going. No joke. He keeps it going. Um, he keeps it cooking. Wow, what is this? Um, man, Mr. Morell, thank you. Said towards the medical expenses, thank you, brother, for the twenty dollar holler. Also, really, really big. For <laughs> nine, you deserve it. Hey, thank you, David Williams. Thanks, no, for real, David. Nobody deserves that. I don't deserve it, but I am grateful for it. I don't deserve. I don't deserve it. I'm grateful for it. That I uh, uh as soon as I act like I deserve some shit, that's when you stop acting like you start you your appreciation dips. You know what I mean? Only through the oh shoot, only through the grace of God. Thank you. I appreciate you more than you know. Um, and the topic was let me get back to this, man. Let me get back to this. Let me do this. What were we on? 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 Yeah, definitely. Oh, I wanted to be Dennis Rodman, dog. That was me. I wanted to be Dennis Rodman. Shit, Dennis Rodman. Dog, Dennis Rodman could play some damn basketball with his non-shooting, non-dribbling, super athletic. Yeah, I was a big fan of Dennis Rodman when he was from like 93 to 96. Man, I was a Dennis Rodman fan. Man, I was like, man, man. Den oh, Bill Lyon. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, man. That was a real bad look. 
That was a real bad look. Look, man, I'm not lying. I was a hack. I was a hack. <laughs> I'll hack the shit out you. You know, I'm telling you, I'll hack the shit out you and dare you to fight. <laughs> like, for real, I would hack the shit out you and dare you to fight. Um, Why can't I find the video on Bill? Oh, because it's a live. It's on a live stream. It's on a live stream. People have cut it up. Hey, so deep said I still got scars. I never hacked you, man. Bro, I ain't never hacked you. <laughs> I would have, man, I ain't never hack you too. I might have got you once because your ass tried to jump over me or some shit. I got fat and all of a sudden you want to start jumping all over the damn place. I might have, I might have slapped you. I might have slapped you once or twice. <laughs> I might have slapped you. I always try. Oh, yeah, I'll slap the shit out you trying to dunk. Oh, yeah, I'll slap the shit, man. You better get your little ass away from me now. <laughs> I wouldn't bounce you on the ground or nothing, dog, but you better believe that shit. Hell no, you ain't dunk. I can jump high enough to slap the shit out your arm. I know that. <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you, I was a hack, dog. That's what I was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. You ain't dunking on me, dog. Hell no. Crazy. You ain't posterizing me. <laughs> you ain't posterizing me. We all know people who accidentally, man, I wasn't, I wasn't accidentally doing shit. I, that shit was on purpose. I'm telling you, I got anger issues. I'm telling you, I got anger issues, man. Yo, man, you ain't never fought in the streets. Man, you got you got shit fucked up. Okay? <laughs> you got shit fucked up. I absolutely would be fighting in the streets. Tripping. Now, I have no idea why people think that, oh, you would never fight in the streets. You, man, I'm old. Now that I'm old, yeah, you may catch me. Yeah, I'm old. Hey, I, I admit it. Okay? But, man, you out your damn mind. At 23 years old, I'm socking you in your shit. Believe it. And on top of it, I'm not even going to hit you. I'm trying to hit you with this. Very hard. <laughs> I don't even believe in hitting with my hand. I don't believe in punching. <laughs> Whatever, though. Anyone. Anyway, yeah, because I was trapped. I mean, you know, I wasn't good at it. I mean, I didn't grow up playing basketball. <laughs> I, I didn't grow up playing basketball. Y'all grew up playing basketball. I didn't start playing basketball until I was like 15, 14, 15 or something. Hey, playing. Y'all been playing basketball since you little ass kids. Not me. Anyway, let's get back on the boxing conversation, man. <laughs> let's get back on. Let's get on the boxing conversation. I could, hey, I could fucking run though. I can tell you that. You play around with me, I'm definitely gonna run. Hey, you better be. A, you got to be pretty fast to get to be fast enough to get away from me, though. That I will say. The two things that I could do athletically is I could fight and I could run. Y'all couldn't take that shit from me. I fast. And I can and I could fight. Those are the two things. So if you could beat me, if you could get winning on me, you're not catching me. I'm the fuck up out of there. <laughs> I was in Hapkido. No, I was in Hapkido. Hapkido Akido. And we used to fight. We used to slap box all the time. And I used to fight all the time. So I could fight. I could fight and I could run. Those and I it, though, that athletically, those are my things. Fight, I could fight and I could run. I wasn't scared of fighting. Matter of fact, I fought so many times that if I didn't really, like, if I didn't think you were a challenge, I wouldn't even fight you. Like, I was, I, mean, I got to the point, really, like, and maybe, like, my, I got in so many fights that my, my freshman year in high school, people used to thought think I was soft because they would, like, try to push me, and I would be like, I wouldn't fight. I'd be like, uh, I'd be like, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? And I'll be like at a party or something. And somebody be like, oh, yeah, yeah, man. I'm a do, 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 do. And I'll be like looking at him like, man, should I do I want to fight this guy and get a bloody lip or hurt my hand or some shit? Hey, we did not fight Robert Williams, though. Man, I would have fought Robert Williams. We did not fight. No, we did not fight Robert Williams. I would have fought Robert Williams, Nev. I'm I mean, he may have got the best of me, but he's catching something. Believe it. Robert Williams, a big ass dude. He was gonna catch some shit now. He had Robert Williams had enough damn sense. Robert Williams had enough damn sense. Rest in peace. He said, "Nope, you don't think I would have fought him? Yes, I would have. He would have put a hand on me. Oh, he was too scary. Oh, he was too scary. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Because don't tell me I wouldn't have fought Robert Williams. I fucking damn sure would have fought Robert Williams. You're not putting your big ass hands on me. Fuck out of here." <laughs> Man, get the fuck out of here. I bet I hit you in your shit. 
Okay, I bet I do that. You got me. Oh, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Hell no. Man, please. You better believe that. Rest in peace to Robert Williams, though. Robert, rest in peace. To, man, Robert Williams is big, man. Robert Williams is like 6'3", 250 or something. And hell yeah, I would have ran if necessary. But now, nah, we weren't in a situation where we could run. Where could I have run? We were in a damn cage. That shit was caged in with people all over the place. There was nowhere to run. I had to run on the football field to get away from his big ass. Hell no. What I was going to do, I was going to punch him in his shit. You know what I'm saying? I was going to punch him in his shit. And if he would have tried to grab me, I was going to grab his fucking neck. I was going to do whatever the fuck I got to do until somebody broke us the fuck up <laughs> with that big ass dude. Hell no. Man, that dude's big as shit. Big and strong. And definitely could fight. But dude, he was going to have to do it. He wasn't going to have to do that shit. I was definitely going to fight him though. Because hell, you ain't going to beat you up now. Come on, man. You a little dude. Well, man, come on, man. Come on, man. He wasn't supposed to be talking and looking at you like that. You do what am I gonna let him let what do you think I was gonna do? Let him you fight him? Now I love you to death, man, but I wasn't about to let you fight him. That shit wasn't right. <laughs> you mean you like come on, like, dude, what you fucking trying to intimidate a dude that's five seven? He's five eight, he's 135 pounds. Get your big ass away from him. You know what I mean? You weigh yeah, I weighed you about 100 pounds. I it would have been less of if I would have lost, it would have been less of an ass whooping, dog, just because of the size. Okay, now if your brother Mike was there, I'd have let Mike bite his ass or something. I'd have let Mike bite his ass or something, cause I know Mike would have pulled some shit out on him. He needed to just be glad Mike did. Mike wasn't there with some dead with a knife or something. Hey, hey Malcolm, Matt, hold on a second, man. I'm sorry, we get, we, we, I digress. Man, for for Lolo said Kareem, hey. Ramadan, Kareem, to my fellow Muslims, God bless the chat, and God bless you for now. Whatever you believe in, let's all pray for Buddy's recovery. Absolutely, that's what I believe in, right there. And Malcolm Allen, brother, thank you so much, and I believe anything that a billion people believe in got a lot of truth to it. That's what I think. <laughs> I think anything that everybody, that people, that makes sense and a billion people got belief in, makes some sense. Theo said, let me find out you was giving your milk away. Yeah, let me, let me, let me find out you, you, you was talking. <laughs> let me, let me find out you was talking. Can I tell a banana story? Sure. I was in college. The banana story, the one that Rollo keeps talking about. Here was the thing. There's a dude from DC. You know cats from DC. DC dudes think they can fight. Everybody from the inner city thinks they can fight. So there was a dude from D.C. that thought he could fight. And we were in a we were in a, and I was like, man, whatever. Get the fuck out of my face. Blah, blah, blah. The usual shit. People talking shit back and forth. So I was I was like, what do you want to do? He was like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. What do you want to do? And so I walked away. And as I walked away, he took a banana and he threw a rotten banana at me and he hit me in the back with a rotten banana. So then I turned around and I beat the shit out of him. Right down a wall. It was because he was up against a wall, stupid enough to stand up against a wall. What kind of idiot in a fight puts his back to a wall? You're gonna get you got nowhere to go. You can't even, he couldn't even pull his arms back. When your back is on a wall, dude, you can't even hardly punch, you can't even hardly punch. So anyway, just whooped him down the wall. I whooped it, and that's what Rollo said. Oh, I would have done something to the dude with the rotten banana. I beat the dude up, dumbass. What you want me to say? He couldn't fight. But the thing is, he couldn't fight. There's a lot of dudes from the city. Bro, if you're if you're from somewhere where there's a bunch of guns and you are used to people settling your issues with guns, you don't know how to use your hands because you think you can pull out a gun. If there ain't no gun, what's going to happen? You're going to get your ass whooped by somebody who knows how to use their hands. And I'm from Illinois and I can wrestle a little bit. I can wrestle a little bit because they teach you how to wrestle in school. And Hopkito's got all that leveraging shit in there. We got all that leverage locking your elbows up and putting you up, all of that shit, man. But more importantly, straight punches right down the middle with guys with huge hands, them shits hurt. 
My punches hurt because my hands are huge. Relative to my size, my hands are very, very, very big. I've been able to palm a basketball since I was like 13. I can grab a basketball, spin it around, grab it, move it around, all of that. Can palm a basketball very, very easily. Always have been able to. As a result, my knuckles are quite wide and my body is quite heavy. So you're going to get hit with a straight punch from somebody well over 200 pounds with big hands dead in your shit a bunch of fucking times. That shit is going to make you fall down. That's just geometry or whatever calls physics. Okay. Malcolm Allen, thank you, brother. But look, let's get back to on the boxing talk because I don't want somebody trying to test me. I'm an old man. Don't test me. You win. Leave me alone. Leave me alone because people don't use back in the 80s and the 90s. People use their fists. Now people don't use fists. People use metal. Metal. It's way easier and more effective. So, no, nah, I'm not into that. You crazy kids can have all that. He said, I grew up in Kenosha, Wisconsin, but I grew up in L. You grew up in Elgin? Hey, you're not too far from me growing up in Elgin. You're not too far from us grow we out there in Elgin. Cast from Aurora. Cast from Aurora. Cast from Maywood. Cast from Bolingbrook. There's black people all over that place, man. A bunch of cats from the city lived all out in that area, man. We fought all the People at a certain age, you fought all the time. I still was not, I'm telling you though, I was not fucking with this dude, um, DJ OC. I wouldn't want to fight him because I he's too strong. And I'm definitely not messing with any of uh um uh so deep's brothers or so deep because that's my brother, but I'm not fucking with his little brothers, man. Them dudes got crazy. Like, I'm not messing with Mike. Mike's Mike's scary, bro. Mike is Mike, Mike, Mike's Mike. Yeah, Romeoville, all of that. Yeah, Romeoville. Yeah, I don't understand why y'all think, bro. Oh, I get it. One mind. Let me get it, brother. Yeah, I don't. I mean, Detroit 8090, same one. I'm sorry, brother. Let me get it. One mind. Thank you, brother, for the super secret. Thank you, one mind. Oh man, man, he said the only thing that saved that card is super un is a super undercard that they still have not announced. So we all from the Midwest. Yeah. My girl, yeah, Joliet, yeah, Joliet. <laughs> they got a bunch of crazy people out there in Joliet, because they got the prison out there in Joliet. But yeah, man, they got she, they may got people everywhere. Aurora got a bunch of crazy Mexicans in Aurora. A bunch of crazy, bunch of crazy Mexicans in Aurora. Um, anyway, though, it is what it is, bro. I'm not no superhero. There's definitely dudes that I definitely would have caught, caught a bunch from, but you know, it is what it is, dog. Um, it is what it is. It was what it is. It is what it is. It, you know, all of that. Anyway, as we move on, you know, back onto this boxing conversation, um, Devin Haney's team needs to start rebuilding their reputation in the black community because their reputation in the black community is terrible it's it's absolutely terrible and you guys can say what you want you can act like that's not true but you've done a worse job you guys you reach the point of diminishing returns with the way that you talk about and you talk to black people when that young lady jumped up and was like, she was talking to Bill, she was not playing with Bill. She was telling Bill exactly what people really think. There's Devin Haney is a really, really good fighter. He seems like a really good kid. He really seems like a very good dude. He seems like an intelligent dude. But you underestimate the fact about what she said about Gervonta. Gervonta Davis is not a figment of your imagination. He is somebody that is looked up to by a large number of inner city black people in one of the biggest metropolitan areas in the country. From Baltimore to D.C., Virginia, all of that area in there, all the way up to New York. 
One of the things that really struck me, and I'm, ta I'm talking to you, Bill, because we're not from everywhere. We're not from everywhere. Y'all are from the West Coast. Y'all are not from the Midwest. I don't care if you live there for a couple years. You're not from the Midwest. Because you stayed there for a little bit. You're not from there. You're not from Kentucky. I can hear it in your voice. You're not from there. Right? You're not from the Midwest. You're not from the East Coast. You got to understand that's where all the black people are. We, are we, we, we over there. California black folk are almost an anomaly. They're not quite an anomaly, but they're almost a they're almost an anomaly. You they talk different, they sound different, they act different, much different than people in Chicago act, much different than people in Atlanta act, the South and the dog. That's where all the black people are over there. They're over there. That's why all these big name. A matter of fact, I don't even know. If there's any big name, really big name black fighters that came from the West Coast. They're all from the Midwest and the East. Ali's Midwest. Sugar Ray Leonard is the is East Coast. Gervonta's East Coast. Floyd Mayweather's the Midwest. It goes on and on and on. That's where all the black people are. It's where they're all, that's where they all are. Joe Lewis is from the mid, the South and the Midwest. Metropolitan era means era means all this all. There's the city proper, and then there's the all of the cities and towns that surround it. So you have a lot of people that live in Chicago, but you also got a lot of towns around Chicago that are exist because of Chicago. Joe Frazier's from Philadelphia. He's from the East. Most black people are not living in. Most black people do not live in the West. You guys are anomalies. Dog, for real. If there was a real battle between California black people and East Coast black people, it'd be a massacre. Because there's like 20 times as many of them. There's no way you could get out of that. Y'all don't even have that many black people there. Just to tell you, just for real. You guys don't have any, you don't have... Let me see how many black people live in California, period. Black population of California. You got 15% of the population of California. So you got what, 4 million, 5 million, 4 or 5 million in California? It's actually a lot of black people, but nothing like New York. Black population of, oh, 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 yeah. That's, and that's the whole state. That's the whole state of which you have you have basically 4 million black people divided between L.A., between L.A., San Francisco, Oakland, all those different cities, all those different cities. It's not a lot. Black population of Illinois. Dude, there's as many, there's 1.7 million black people just in Illinois. There's 2 million just in Illinois alone. 2 million black people just in Illinois alone. There's five, what, 5 million in all of California. There's two just in Illinois. We're not even talking about Indianapolis, Michigan, New York, Philadelphia. It's It's huge. There's, if that's where it is. So anyway, that's like kind of like Mexicans are West Coast, west of the Mississippi. East, the black people by and large, Florida, it's that's the area he's from. You can't isolate yourself from them and think that you're going to do really. Dude, I don't even know if he's going to be a big draw to cats in New York. Do you remember when, do you remember when, when, um, when Gervonta Davis 
when Javante Davis, I didn't honestly, I think that that is a very underrated number. Black. Yeah, there's like a million black people just in Chicago. There's a million black people just in Chicago. And you know we don't do the damn census, okay? <laughs> and you know we don't do no damn census in Chicago because I ain't never had somebody send no shit to me. Anyway. What's going on? So you got to recalibrate. You got to recalibrate. You got to recalibrate. Because when that lady said that, that's something you need to listen to. You can't turn around and say, fuck y'all. Like y'all did. You said, fuck. basically, what Bill said was, when that lady said that, he turned around and said, fuck y'all, I'm riding for mine. Fuck y'all, I don't care what y'all say. I'm going to say who, whatever I want about whoever I want. No, you can't. Malcolm X, man, if they, let me tell you something. If Malcolm X had said the same thing that Bill Haney said, that shit would have been played a zillion times. And they would have called him a what? They would have called him a fraud is what they would have called him. They would have called him a fraud and a sellout. That's what they would have said. I'm, more, I'm just interested in mine. I'm not interested in theirs. Now, it's cool if you're just interested in your own and that's it. That's no problem with that. It's no problem if you're just interested in your own, but don't claim to be interested in everybody. If you're just interested in your own, just say you're interested in your own. Floyd says that. Floyd will talk about black people every now and then, but for the most part, Floyd's out for Floyd. For the most part, Floyd's out for Floyd. Ali is the one that said, talk about, look, man, I would rather be broke. I would rather be broke. I would rather be broke. Then sit up there in my mansion with my million with millions and millions of dollars and know that my brothers are out there struggling. He he talked the talk and he walked the walk. Even though John Henry Clark was not the biggest fan in the world. But still, he said, hey man, he did take if he only took a stand once, he took a stand on that. But you gotta understand who John Henry Clark is. John Henry Clark is somebody that really did sacrifice, you know, a lot. Because God dog, that man was smart. He could have done anything with his mind. Anything. Anything. 3.4 million black people in Florida. There's more pe black people in Florida than there is in, New in all of California. In all of California. I got timed out last time I watched for stating my opinion. What was your opinion, Jesse Havner? Give me your opinion again. Don't block Jesse Havner. What was your opinion again? Can you write what your opinion was? Because sometimes you will get blocked for your opinion. You will, depending on how you phrase it. Because we're not really recruiting new listeners. To be honest, I'm not really recruiting new listeners. I'm straight. You know what I mean? As in, we're talking, we get to have a good conversation here. When too many of you guys come around and you guys start acting like, you know, like I work for you, um, Ain't really ain't trying to hear it. You know what I mean? Oh, no, I think he's the number two. John Henry Clark dedicated his whole life adult to his research. He's the top elder of hidden info. Evil white folk have suppressed. Uh, well, OK, of the of the information. Yes, he's the number two mind, though. He comes into second place. He comes in second place. To the abuse, to the to the smartest black men to ever address those, no, no, definitely not. Um, Doctor Ben, no, the smartest is Neely Fuller Jr. Nobody's close. Neely Fuller Jr. is what you call a peerless genius. He's a peerless genius. Neely Fuller Jr. is a peerless genius. I ran across that phrase in my research last night. There are what you call ordinary geniuses, people that you that come up with really revolutionary ideas, do revolutionary things, but they do them around the same time that there are other people doing it. So where you have your John Henry Clark, you also have your Chancellor Williams. Where you have your Chancellor Williams, you also have your John Jacksons. You have your Sheikh Auntie Diops. 
You have well, yeah, you have your you have your Ida Van Sertimers. Nobody is Neely Fuller Jr. Neely Rev Fuller Jr. has revolutionized the, the idea of, of, of what we're talking about. And so many people steal his work without seven, saying his name, that it is incredibly, incredibly amazing. They don't even know that they're quoting him. They have no idea what he says. They can't even understand what he says. But it is so basic, so simple, and so revolutionary, and so beyond the touch of the white man, of any person ever trying to stop it. The intellect of Jermon, the intellect, the intellect, the intellect of ne Neely Fuller Jr. and his theory is like an is like an atomic bomb that never stops exploding. I'm telling you, it's so fundamental. It's so incredible. He's so, such an. I'm stunned. He's stunning. See, people don't even get it. He's stunning. He's stunning. He's so his in his simplicity. He's stunning. And then in the way that he wants you to apply it, it is absolutely viral. It's viral. It will run through every part of you. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's um I am now y'all talk shit. I never would ever. Dog, for real, I'm nowhere. I talk about it because I am smarter than most of you. Him, him, he's in, he's a fucking savant. He's a savant. He's a savant. There's nobody like him. There's nobody anything like him. Dude, he is so, dude, I swear, the first time I ever listened to him, I was scared to listen to him. I was scared to listen to him. Because I was listening to Francis Cress Wellesley, right? I read the ISIS papers. I listened to everything she said. You know, she's a psychiatrist. She was breaking down what she broke down. She did what she did, right? And I was trying to understand it. And she kept talking about Neely Fuller Jr. And I was like, but I kept focusing on her. I kept focusing on her. And but she kept talking about Neely Fuller Jr. What she did with Neely Fuller Jr. 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 She just kept doing it. So I was like, hold on, man. I got to bite the bullet and listen to this guy. And I'm telling you, man, his shit was so, I was like, what is this dude talking about that is so fundamentally to the crazy shit she's talking about? That when I listened to him, I was scared. I was literally like, am I, it was like, am I about to listen to Lucifer or some shit? Like, like, for, I swear, because I was smoking weed at the time. <laughs> Honest, man, because my mind was like, I was like, man, there's something so fundamental, so in, so otherworldly about what this man has to be teaching. That I don't that because you understand who she is. If you understand who she is and what she was doing and how fundamentally that will affect the way you view the world. And the fact that she's just trying to give meaning to him. Man, but when I listened to it, I was like, wow, this ain't nothing but granddaddy right here. This is just granddaddy. I, I'm not as familiar with Granville Woods. Um, I'll look it up, though. I'll look into him. And, uh, uh, number, I'm telling you, I don't need anybody but Neely Fuller. Honestly. I'm about to read one of the... I've ordered it. And it's on its way. Um, the Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor C. Williams. I've never read it, so I'm going to read, read that. I'm going to read that in hardback. Provided it doesn't hurt my eyes too bad, because the only thing they have is an audio. Uh, it, I had some good face-to-face -face conversations with Neely Fuller. He surprised me with some things that he said. Yeah, but here's the thing, Peacekeeper. It doesn't even matter what he says. It's how he says to think. You can, He can be completely wrong about everything that he says and every opinion that he has. It's the framework that he sits it on. Be constructive in everything you do, you say, and you think. That race is racism. That our our responsibility is not to mistreat someone. That's the whole thing. It's right there. It's right there. That's it. It's the whole thing right there. Don't miss. And in fact, don't mistreat someone. Claude Anderson's okay. Claude Anderson's nowhere near a Neely Fuller Jr. Rick. He's not. I mean. He, don't get me wrong, he's a very wise man, very experienced man, and is, and you can learn a lot from him. 
But the fundamental mindset of, of Neely Fuller Jr., that's why I'm saying that the man is a, he is without a doubt, a peerless genius. Because there is nobody else that, that I've ever heard that has said anything similar to him. Neely Fuller Jr. isn't even about the money. The what money is what he'll say. What money? Like, for real, what money? On, on the real. I Look, I'll get back, bro. I'll get back. I'm going to get back to boxing. But any of y'all really want to know, dog, seriously? Nobody. In my, in my opinion, and I was, and you know who I'm a big fan of. I'm a big fan of Franz Fanon. I'm a huge fan of Franz Fanon. I'm a huge fan. Huge fan of john henry clark i'm a huge fan of of um god who would i say i'm a i'm a huge i respect the honorable elijah muhammad i have a tremendous amount of respect for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I think that he is without a doubt one of the most underrated leaders that we that there has ever been in black America. He is an amazing, amazing. The things that he accomplished was amazing. Amazing. There is amazing. I'm talking about what they achieved. I'm not talking about people that I've heard people say the same thing. Okay, I, I've... History, historians are historians. No, the only true philosophers, the true philosophers are Neely Fuller Jr. And Franz Fanon. No, they're, they're the true philosophers. Those are the only two that I would raise to the level of, a philo of philosophers. Those are the only two that I would say, really. Nearly, honestly, Francis Creswell and Wellesley is just an adaptation of, really is just an advent and a, a, she basically applied France Fanon to Neely Fuller Jr. That's what she did with her own personal twist of Freudian of Freudian psychology. She's like a Freudian. But anyway, I don't want to do that. Francis Cress Welsing. What did I say? Wellesley? Welsing. Sorry. Yeah, she's from Chicago. I've met her. I met her when she was alive. She looked at me really. Ooh, she gave me a look, bro. I was like, what the hell? She scared the shit out of me the way she looked at me. She scared me to death the way she looked at me. Very uncomfortable. I was very, I was like, wow, what are you doing? Like, she could see, like, nah, I'm just, I'm for real. The way she looked at me. I don't know if she thought I was going to rob her or whether she thought I was like an alien or something. You know, but anyway. She's a brilliant woman for sure. All right, man, let me tell you something, man. I believe that. No. No. Frances Cress Wellesley is an is a she's a psychiatrist. You don't know what she's looking at you for. She's a psychoanalyst. She's a psychoanalyst. I don't know what she was looking at me for. I have I see I have wild theories about it, but that would be getting like way too personal about things related to me. But um she just I had a conversation one time with um, Kwame Ture. I had a conversation with Kwame Ture. Anyway, look, man, it's just, you know, it's just interesting. But anyway, like I said, I, I talk boxing, so I don't do all of that stuff. I don't want to do all of that. But 
some people just can see you. Some people can really see you and see what you are. And no, and I think she's something than different than she ever really put out. She's one of the more spiritually powerful and gifted women that you're going to run into. I think that she is somebody that is just. I don't think she. I never. I thought she was different than what she than what she shows. That's what I think. And I, I think a lot of people are very mystic. I think she was very mystic. That that that's the best way that I would say that. She strikes to me to be somebody that was mystic, almost mystical with her perceptions of human, the way that she looks at people. Like, I don't know what she knows. I don't know what she knows being what she is. So when she would look in the crowd and that Don, and they remember she did that interview on the, the when she was looking at the crowd in the Donovan, in the, uh, what is it called? Um, Phil Donahue show, the way she scanned the audience. The way she scanned the audience, man, she scanned that. She scanned the audience like she was a doctor looking at patients. Like for real, she looked at like she. It looked like she was a at a doc. She looked like she was a doctor in a room full of sick people, and she was analyzing everybody the way she looked at them. Like she was looking at how they were moving and what they were saying and what their reactions were, and we're looking at them like you are a room of very very unwell people. And she knew that everybody in the room, room was sick and was demonstrating some types of some type of sickness in her in her way. How long did I talk to Kwame Tori? And I mean, a long time, well, a couple of times. I spoke to Kwame Tori, rest in peace, several times for a good amount of time. I was lectured by him a bunch of times. I was lectured by him a bunch of times. I was lectured by John Henry Clark. I was lectured by doctors Ife from New from California. Ife Williams, you'll never even know who Dr. Ife Williams is, but brilliant, brilliant woman. I had a lot of really brilliant professors. I mean, look, man, I, but serious the thing, man, I'm intellectually, intellectually, I was gifted. Very gifted when it comes to, 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 to logic, not with math. I was never good at math, not particularly good at some things that I'm not good at, but the particular things that I'm good at is I was very good with metaphysics. I'm very good with philosophy. I'm very good with logic. Those three particular things I didn't I didn't need much training in. And they came very very natural to me. And they came natural to me at a very young age. So when people were talking, I could converse with them about those things on a level that they that most people my age wouldn't understand them. So it was something that I was it was something that I do believe came from whatever experiences I've had before I was in this particular situation that I'm in now. So it always came very easy to me. So I could talk to him and I could ask them questions and get further explanations where a lot of other people were there just trying to get the, trying to catch up on the basics. Right. So the one conversation I had with, um, I had a, basically the conversations I had with, with Okami Turi. No, I don't like astronomy. No, not really. And astrology, it's kind of freaky to me because you can make the cards do whatever you want them to do. If I take every time that I've ever played with a, those cards, those tarot cards, I can make them do whatever I want them to do. As long as you believe it, as long as you know the question and you think it's going to be what it's going to be. So no, I stay away from that stuff because that stuff is actually kind of scary to me. Because I don't have a disbelief in mysticism. I meant astrology. Astronomy to me is a waste of time. Uh, so you're talking about the official astronomy. You're talking about like black holes and all that shit. That's a waste of fucking time to me. I don't see any relevance in it. I think it's a waste of time. The whole discipline to me is a waste of time. And another and just a way for people to try to figure out how to spread domination over other people. I don't think we should even be, I think that it is an area that we shouldn't even be basic in, that we shouldn't even be focused on. No, I don't care about it. I, I don't see anything relevant about the whole topic of black holes. I don't. How does that improve the human condition at all? If somebody can explain to me how that is going to improve the human condition, then we can study it and talk about it all day. But if all you're going to do is try to give me 
No, I don't even pay attention to him. I think the whole line of the discussion is garbage. Why the fuck do I care about a black hole? If it is not going to allow me to get my to make sure I can take care of what my kids do, my kids can eat. Is it going to wind up where you get to describe you get to discover some type of technology where it's going to make it that much harder for my son to buy a job to find a job? Is that what we're going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to find out? Are you going to find a way to blow up Israel that much faster? Is that what you're going to do? Because every other one of these scientific explanations has wind up with a lot of people dead. So I don't understand why I would waste my time thinking about it. You're just going to try to figure out how to launch a piece of metal further and make it land more specifically. You're just going to go into the 31st century slingshot. <laughs> like what? You're going to try to figure out how to say, oh, we've got life on other planets. How can we make it work for us? Until you get rid of the concept of capitalism and capitalist motivation for every single solitary move that society makes, I don't care. Why would you want to explore another space where humans can exist? Why? So you can go blow some people up and dominate them? So you can take somebody else's land? What the fuck is the difference between trying to explore other universes and Europeans trying to explore the Americas? They are. They're going to do the same shit somewhere else. Look, dude, I don't care. I don't want to talk. I don't like that shit. No, I'm never going to do it. No, not interested. Not interested. And it really is just a way to hide money anyway. It's just a way to hide money. If you can tell me a reason why I need to care about a black hole so we can clean the planet, how about I don't believe you? I don't, like I said, I don't care about the topic. I don't care about the subject matter of astronomy. Astrology, on the other hand, I find it cute. I find it funny. However, at the same time, it's also unnecessary. It's also unnecessary. Man, look, man, I'm not going to get into thoughts about any of that stuff. Because here's the thing. I'm never going to invest my brain power in it. I'm never going to do it. Because as soon as you start contemplating it too deeply, people will figure it out. I'm not, I don't want people to figure that shit out. I don't. Wherever there's these other natural people out there in the universe, I don't never want y'all to find them. They do, if they're there, they're doing perfectly fine without y'all asses. Okay? Y'all are just trying to find an end game to where you fuck up everybody, everything here. Okay? So how about we don't have no options nowhere else, so you got to actually fix where we are right now. Like you're asking, get off this shit anyway. You can't exist off this shit. You can't. You, what are you going to transplant? A hair or something? You gonna start transplanting hairs? You think you can pluck your hair out of your head, dig it into your, somebody else's head, it's gonna start growing? We are part of this earth. We are part of this earth. We are not separate from this earth. We are part of this earth. Everything of this earth, we are of this earth. We can't leave this earth. We can't leave it. Any more than your ear can leave your body and hear for somebody else. Okay, and if it could, I don't give a shit. I want my ear intact. The fact of the matter is, if all the human beings leave this earth because you idiots keep doing this shit, we'll all be dead. Great. And guess what? The rest of the universe, the earth will take a couple zillion years or whatever that measurement is. It will reset and start again. It will scratch us off its back. We're not that important. We're not that important. It's a stupid conversation. And that's what I would tell Neely. That's what I would tell Neil, uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. This is a dumbass conversation. It's a stupid conversation. Why do I care? Because of the medical advances? What do you mean? Everybody already knows that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and you're going to die anyway. You're supposed to die. It's not about whether or not you're going to die. It's about how you live. 
So what is, how is this going to help me live better? I know I was going to make you live better because you're going to get a lot of money talking about it and writing books about it and feeding yourself off of it. I understand that. And God bless you for doing it. Intellectuals need something to do. But I don't need that. So no, I don't find that. If somebody talks about me, the genius of physics, please. Please. I don't find anything useful in that. What Neely Fuller Jr. taught, I found essentially useful to my life. How do I beat the shit out of y'all in a debate when you try to browbeat me about not being black enough for you? Well, what did Neely Fuller Jr. say? Only thing you owe these black folk is not to mistreat them, son. So I shouldn't mistreat them? Exactly, you shouldn't mistreat them. Matter of fact, you shouldn't even be talking to them because that's what they want. They want conflict. My weakness is I like conflict. That's why I disagree with Neely Fuller Jr. from a philosophical point of view. Conflict is necessary. It's what type of conflict? That's where I, that's the conversation I had with Kwame Nkrumah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, Kwame Nkrumah. Or Kwame Ture, excuse me. Kwame Ture. Kwame Ture. Because Kwame Ture was talking about the necessity of conflict and how the table in the room could not stand up without the conflict of the particles with each other and the legs. And Neely Fuller Jr. says it's conflict, contact is conflict. We need to minimize, to minimize conflict, monetize, minimize conflict. And he also has a very, a, an essentially realist view of the world, which is that we are in prison already. And when he says a race war is going to start, he said, what are you talking about? We already lost it. Race war is going to start. When it, what did you say? It's going to start. We already lost it. Didn't you realize you're speaking English? You speak English. You're three quarters European. Do I, excuse me. I'll talk about myself. I am. I speak English. I am uh, at least 40% European. I am super colonized. My whole body's colonized. They already won. The entire monetary system is going through their systems. You, they got rid of the concept of bartering and you literally are passing around pieces of paper with their pictures on it. You already, what are you talking about race war? You already in, you already lost. What you are is in confinement. You just don't need to understand where you are. The person that with the original idea for the matrix is Neely Fuller Jr. <laughs> Neely Fuller Jr. is the man that should be created, get credited with the matrix. It's him. And you don't think the people that wrote that shit didn't read him? Think about what he's saying. Think about what he's saying. He's saying, look, man, you're not in what you think you in. You're not where you are not what you you're not in the situation you think you're in. You think you're free, free to do what? What are you free to do? You're not free to do nothing. You can't you can't get a car and drive without a license. You can't stay on this land that God created without an ID, without permission. You get a number assigned, a number assigned to you at birth. Oh, you don't get to pick flowers off of trees. You can't pick an apple off of a. You can't pick an apple off a tree without going to jail if you don't own that tree. Your money is a chain. You think it's freedom, but it's not. It's the exact opposite. The more money you have, the further you can go. And if you act something funny, they're going to snatch that money from. You. So you don't go anywhere where the money ain't right. What is that? That's confinement. So what is jail? It's greater confinement. It's just greater confinement. Because he's looking at the world for what it actually is and not through the rose-colored lenses that people present it to you in. So, no, nah, man, I don't have time for astrology. I mean, I don't have time for astronomy. The fuck I care for. 
Brother, I'm trying to get more chains on my link. And I'm trying to understand that this is very fucking real. What he says is very real. It works better than what you say. What you say doesn't make sense to me. You say I'm free. What does that mean that I'm free? What does it mean? What does it actually mean to be free? Free to do what? What can you do without the permission of somebody? I'm waiting. What? Your bodily functions, and that's it. And you better not do that shit where you're not supposed to do it. That's it. But you free? No, it's called relative. You're relatively free. Relatively free. Like we have a representative democracy. We don't have a democracy. We have a representative one, which means you have somebody that represents you. You're not free to speak in front of Congress. You're not free to introduce laws. You're not free to do that stuff. You have a representative that does that for you. So no, I ain't got any time for Neely. I don't have no time for Neil deGrasse Tyson. Digging in the mud. You playing in the fucking mud. That's what I think of him. Just be honest with you. I think of physicists as people that like to play in the mud and talk about, oh, you're so smart. Because you like to play in the mud all day. Meanwhile, you're just building a tighter cage. That's what I think. I think you're just building a tighter cage. That's what we're doing. But you want me to celebrate you, Alvin? You want me to celebrate Albert Einstein when what he did resulted in what? Continuous fear for everybody on the fucking planet because you wanted to figure some shit out that you had no business trying to fucking figure out. I invented the airplane. Yeah, now they can, now these dudes can, man, please. That's why you keep the shit secret. You ever wonder why they always, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about boxing. Do you ever wonder why they said these people in the past used to say, man, look, dude, do not cast your, your do not cast your, per, your pearls in front of swine. Swine will eat you. Swine will eat you. Swine are very smart. They'll kill you. That's why you don't. So anyway, there's theories and things that I have in my mind that I know are perfectly well, that I believe are perfectly well true. They will never leave my mouth. Not never. It will never leave my mouth. Uh-uh. Because I already knew. But see, the crazy thing is that people already know. They're just not telling you. And you guys keep talking about this stupid shit. I'm sorry, brother. Y'all got to let me do this today. Y'all keep talking this dumb shit about what Ryan Garcia talks about, the Illuminati and all that. No. The problem is that your brain, your consciousness is not within your brain. That is the key, key to the problem. And you are, it's so hard for people to understand the significance of that. No, it did not change the course of history. You're a fucking idiot. History is the past, you moron. See, this is somebody that thinks they're smart and is a fucking buffoon. You cannot change the course of history. Because history is in the past. He affected the people that came after him. And it was not his decision either. Because once again, you don't understand how it works, how it actually works. Great ideas are not developed in the brain of a man.
if re- if if reality is subjective because mathematics is subject is subjective i'm not a mathematician but i'm familiar with with the argument that goes on amongst mathematicians about the nature of math and whether math is actually subjective or it is objective if mathematical equations changed based on the intentions of the mathematician that means that you can make math do what you want it to do you can affect reality and make reality the what you want it to be because what is reality in essence it is the way that you perceive the unperceivable That's what I'm saying. You think like a kid. I mean, for real, boxing hacker, I don't even like talking to you, brother, because you're impossible to teach. You're not coachable. You're not coachable. You're intelligent, but you're not coachable. You want to prove what you already know. You're trying to always impress me. You don't impress me trying to impress me. And I'm not trying to impress any of y'all. Believe it. I don't. It is what it is. I'm just trying to give myself a little break from talking about boxing. Talking about boxing. And I'm so appreciative of everybody having sponsored this kid today. Let me tell you what I want to do. Can I tell you what I wanted to do? This is going to make me sound like a pure psycho. But I'll tell you what I wanted to do. This is... (laughs) This is going to make me feel like this is where I knew, dog, nah, something, nah. I wanted to figure out. Can I tell you? I'm going to tell you. All right, I'm going to tell you. This is bad. I shouldn't tell you. But I'm going to tell you because I'm going to be honest with you, okay? All right, so did I ever tell you what I wanted to grow up when I wanted to be as a, as an assa- as a kid when I was a little kid? Does anybody remember what my first job that I ever, because if you guys listen to me every day, you know what what I, what when somebody asked me when I was like the second grade, what I wanted to do for a living, what my answer was. Does anybody remember that? I'm going to wait if see if anybody remembers what I said, because I want somebody not to think I'm making it up. Can anybody recall what I said? Hunter Young had it. I wanted to be an assassin. I wanted to be an assassin. And because, you know, assassins were cool. James Bond was an assassin. Right? James Bond was an assassin. The Godfather had assassins working for him. Assassins were cool. You know what I mean? Assassins are still cool. You know what I mean? King Vaughn singing songs about being an assassin. I wanted to be an assassin. Plus, that fucking word sounds so cool. Assassin. I wanted to be an assassin. I, You know what I mean? And plus, if I was an assassin, nobody's going to fuck with me. Because I can just roll up on you, you gone. No, I didn't want to be that type of assassin. I want to be an assassin that didn't go to jail. So I was like, man, how could you be an assassin? They're not going to give me no license. So anyway, I thought for a long time, all right, whatever. But it was always in the back of my mind. The idea that how could I literally be an assassin? And then you know that movie, Star Wars, The Death Star? You know, the the movie, The Death Star? The Death Star. In in, around 1978, a movie came out called Star Wars. Y'all probably saw it. And it was a Death Star. So the one of the dopest assassins ever, because that's what what Darth Vader was. He's a black assassin. Hey, you fuck with the Empire? Man, don't have me come find you. Darth Vader gonna come find you. Right. So Darth Vader, I always go for the bad guy, too. You know, so Darth Vader, you know, James Earl Jones, all that. He had a Death Star that he was building. Now, I'm going to I'm just leading up to the intellectual process that, that to what to the to the conclusion. OK, the intellectual process to the conclusion. Yeah, I wanted to be the assassin. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I want to be assassin. I did. I wanted to join a gang. I was just not around the gangs. I would have definitely been a GD. I would have loved it. Telling you, man, without a doubt, dog, the, without a doubt, 
I would have been like, oh, yeah, that shit appealed to me. Jeff Fort appealed to me. Jeff Fort appealed to me. When I would hear stories about Jeff Fort and all, man, I, that dude appealed to me. So, yeah, you was a disturbed little kid. Yeah, yeah, I was disturbed as shit. <laughs> I was definitely disturbed. I'm telling you, I tell you. Dude, man, let me tell you, the kids that I grew up with, some of the kids that I grew up wound up shooting up schools. They wound up shooting up schools. I had a free, you know, like shooting up schools, a whole bunch, bunch, not a whole bunch, but several of them. Man, I went to high school with a man, one of my friends we used to hang out with, man, he wound up killing like three, four people. Okay, so dude, like I'm telling you, man, I, death can come. All right, death can come. High school at a, a high school track mate got killed by her boyfriend. That's not unusual. Yeah, Art Pat Beach. Yeah, but not just that. I had other ones too. We had other ones. No, remember Michael Johnson? Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson, a dude standing right next to Robert Williams. Wound up off and wound up off and all them girls. Man, that man is that dude is on a show. <laughs> So anyway, all right, so the Death Star. So I was thinking, man, how can you have a Death Star? And when I started studying information systems, maybe in the early mid 80s, I started getting the understanding of information systems because my father worked for IBM. My brother, you know, worked for everybody in my family at a point in time worked for IBM, right? So I always heard... I had the gist of how information systems work, right? I understood what applications were, what networks were. I watched, you know, from the time that you had the big PC all the way to where you have a little phone like this, which has so much more power, all of that, right? But one day I was looking at the computer and I recognized it were like input, output, and processing. Input, output, processing. Input, output, processing. Graphical user interface, RAM, ROM, random access memory, read-only memory. Random access memory, I do believe, is what is able for us to do the applications that are basically is our outer consciousness. I believe that ROM really is our subconscious. The inputs are our sensations, our eyes, our ears, our skin, our five senses. And eventually, that computer was going to be able to do, have the same type of input that we have. And eventually, it was going to turn into predictive algorithms, tree algorithms, all of the different rules and different things that sit upon top of it and increase its intelligence over time and form it into being the being that they envision. But the vision that they envision that is what the human body is capable of. The whole thing. There is nothing that they can ever achieve in information systems that is not a, that you yourself are not able to do. That's that's the quintessential Henry. What do you call it? John Henry against the steam engine, right? It's John Henry versus the steam engine. It's man versus technology. In that particular in that particular um, um, story, man beats the machine. But because the machine can do it more often and keep going and keep going, the physical body of the man breaks down where the machines, the machines enduring physicality or non-physicality will allow it to continue to go and go and go because it never tires. Right. However, the, 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 the metaphor points to the superiority of God's creation to man's mimicking of that creation. See what I mean? The information systems, no matter how big they are and the technology around it, is nothing more than our imitation of what was created, which is why people say, that's why I thought yesterday that Ryan Garcia needed to shut the fuck up, talking about what the Dogen did. Because the Dogen understands introspection. Just like the information systems that we now think are so amazing is nothing but a poor copy of what we know, oh, dope, was created. That we know was created because we are that ourselves. So is what we are a cheap creation of the universe that sits out beyond us. 
just like a just like just like a snowflake is only a part of the storm a small manifestation of it but it's still representative of the whole so are we a manifestation of the whole which is existence which is the universe so when you tell me that the dogen got this from some fake god i think you're an idiot I don't think that you've ever spent any real time thinking about it. Fuck meditation, contemplation, contemplate, contemplate, sit down, shut up and let it come to you. And a lot of things will come to you. So anyways, back to the assassin shit. So I thought to myself, somebody really pissed me off. And I was like, man, I would take this motherfucker off this earth if I could. And I thought, I think I can. I'm just going to make him die. I'm going to jump all the way to the end. I said, I, if, 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 if it is, if you have Wi-Fi, because remember now we're in the Wi-Fi era where you can walk around your phone and there's no physical lines to anything, but it's all connected. This is connected off of human beings. Guarantee you. I think I can kill you where you sit. I think any one of y'all, as long as I know where you are, there's a way that I can kill you without even saying nothing to you. Boop. Right there. Principle of non-locality supports my contention that that is absolutely possible. The question is, can you make that happen? And I can, and I guarantee you, you can make that happen. I guarantee you, you can make that happen. Guarantee you, you can make that happen. So that's why I'm saying you shouldn't know everything. You shouldn't know everything. Because what is the wisdom in that? Why is that possible? And is that something? Because once I figured out that that's absolutely possible, then I'm telling you, I'm not well in the head. I'm the kind of guy that, you know, they ask that question. You know a person's personality if, they, if you can answer this question. How many dead babies can you fit? In a refrigerator. I'm the type of guy that starts counting babies. But I'm also the same guy that would never put them in a refrigerator. But I would start counting. You know what I mean? So anyway, I don't mean to freak you out. That's what I'm saying. So, that, But the question is, what is it? And then you figure out what it is and you realize, no, thank you. I would never do that. I want nothing but the best for everybody. See, if once you understand why it can happen, then you say, should you do it? And the answer is, hell no, I should never do it. I'm going to wish the best on you. That's And you don't think people already knew what they would say, cast, a, cast your bread upon the water, it will return, return many fold. Cast your bread upon the water, it will return many fold. I'm not casting that bread on that water. Because I'll wind up sick. Right. So anyway, so you ask me about what do I think about these guys? I think that one of the most fundamentally brilliant men that I've ever said was do not mistreat other people. Because no matter how. Deeply or will you guys say deeply, no matter how much I let the contemplation come to me. Neely Fuller Jr.'s approach never gets off. Not even a little bit. G the words of Jesus that are associated with Jesus says. Do unto others as you would have them do upon uh, do unto you. It's essential. It's right there. I learned that when I was a little bit of kid. I was a little bit of kid, and nothing gets past that. That's the genius. Is the simplicity of it. But that's why I'm saying you guys need to be real careful though. When you talk bad about me, when you talk about bad about other people, and when you shit on Jermonte Davis, because you do not know how bad that's going to come back at you. And, and I ain't gonna lie, dog. Y'all, you guys say a lot of crazy shit about that young man. Say a lot of crazy shit about that young man. You say a lot of crazy shit about that young man. You tear down what that man was obviously not building himself. He didn't choose to do those things. 
Just like Boston Acker said, you changed the course of history. He didn't change anything. He is just a part of the experience of reality. That's all he is. And I don't have any disrespect whatsoever for, 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 for um, Albert Einstein. You should be judged by the fruit of your labor. What was the fruit of his labor? If we want to be judged by the fruit of our labors, what's the fruit of your labor? Judge him by it. I don't know what the fruits of his labor were. A physicist can tell me. What was the fruits of the labor of the Manhattan Project? What's the fruit of the labor of the people that invented airplanes? What's the fruit of the labor of the people that invented political realism or adopted political realism as a, as as and regime change as a way to secure the homeland of the United States at at uh, at the cost of the stability of billions of people around the world? What's the fruit of their labor? Anyway, here's the link. I'm sorry. I went on one today. For nine, is Connor Ben and, and AB happening for real? I don't know. I, it probably, who knows? I think so. Cal Coast, hey, for nine, you about to make me pour a glass of whiskey. This is one of those conversations. Yeah, man, I didn't really, I wasn't, I got up this morning. I wasn't, you know, wasn't really chopping it up about boxing that much. This is boxing, though. I mean, it is boxing. But, you know, for now, so uh, will all this AI shit make computers take over the world and start a nuclear war like the movie? No, it will not. You cannot create something greater than yourself. Doesn't work. Can't do it. Can't, can't do it. You can cause a lot of misery, though. But even then, who knows that misery is not what you're supposed to go through. You know what I mean? Again, dude, I'm, I thoroughly believe that every human being animal on this planet can go away and life won't go anywhere. Life will not go anywhere. It's just the reflection. It's just the reflection. If you take the mirror away, that doesn't mean the subject is gone. It just means you can't see it. Just because you take individuality away doesn't mean that you take collectiveness away. Because you take, because you do away with non-being doesn't mean that you do away, just because you do away with being doesn't mean that you don't, you don't, you do away with non-being and that being, being that, that arose from non-being cannot arise again and is not already arisen in many different arenas in many different ways. You, that's why when you're looking at these science fiction movies and they keep talking about the multiverse, it's there trying to get a grip around the fact that they are starting to understand some things that honestly people are understanding it. People are understanding it because, because you killed off a bunch of people that knew it, but that doesn't mean the knowledge went anywhere. Eventually it's going to come back. You can continue to suppress it, but the more you suppress it, the more funny ways it's going to pop up. White supremacy is like trying to stick your finger and trying to stick five fingers in a dam. You can keep doing it, you can keep patching the holes, but eventually, dude, it's just going to be a fucking wrap. Because everything has a beginning, a middle, and an end that is in existence, including existence. If you look at it from the position of the Dogen and how they knew about Sirius B. If you think about it like that, if you think about the connection and the unification of all things, regardless of whether they are mathematical or physical, gossip, boxing, anything. People say that there's no total theory of everything. Not if you're dealing with physics, you fucking morons. You can't, can, you cannot, you cannot create a total theory of everything with physics because physics isn't everything. You're playing in the mud and you're waiting to find everything in the mud. And, and reductionism and trying to break down the parts of everything to figure out the whole so that you can rebuild them. Dude, that doesn't, you can't, yeah. That I do believe, though, that that is probably a process that will be used to correct your ass, though. 
They're going to break down everything that you got. And then you will be rebuilt. You, you will be rebuilt. But with no better understanding, especially if understanding is, I don't even want to do this. No more. See why I get impatience with dumbasses? That's why you don't impress me, boxing hacker. You're a joke. You want to talk about this, boxing hacker? Young man with no gray on his beard and no real suffering in your life that I'm, that, I mean, maybe you do, but whatever. Like I said, I talk boxing because I don't want to talk about this stuff. Bill Haney's never going to beat me in a debate. Never. Bill, you'll never beat me in a debate. Never. No chance. There's no chance ever. Ever. Sometimes I just kind of got to go somewhere. You don't think that I could keep a barbershop going with this? I will talk in a barbershop for three straight hours and nobody will say a damn word if they're interested. Man, the barbershop going to think you bullshit. What barbershop? Name it. Name the barbershop. Oh, you're just joking. Oh, it's jokes, Bill. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> no, nah, that fight's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, Joey. Nah, you can't. He's never going to do it. Oh, Sam, I'm so sorry, Sam, because I was zoning Sam. You're so huge, bro. Thank you. Big time $100. Thank you for that support, bro. I'm going to thank you all for allowing me to do this today. I'm going to take this video down. But thank you for allowing me to do this. Because in a way, it really helps me explain to y'all why I think some of y'all some dumbasses. It's not easy to talk to Rollo. The only thing Rollo understands me to tell him he smells like piss. <laughs> hey, donating to the show, enjoying the vibe. Thank you, brother. And Jameson, I'm sorry, Jameson, for not getting this early. Thank you for the donation. We're not even free to live because we all have to work to maintain our standard of living. Exactly. Because they put in a situation where you can't. This man said he looked like he do, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Man, let me tell you something, dog. One of the best conversations I ever had, Neb, was with Paul Arthurs. <laughs> man, bro, I had a conversation with Paul one time, man, where I was like, come on, Paul. Come on, Paul. Come on, Paul. Hey. He do look like it. I mean, you know, he looks like it once you suggest it and then you're like, oh, he could, you could envision it. And then, yeah, he does. <laughs> the power of suggestion. What is that? Yep, upper. It's a deep, dirty game. Anonymous to most. What are you talking about? Listen, you can smell it. <laughs> Exactly, bro. That's hilarious, man. Man, he'll never recover from that stank joke. Bro, he'll never recover from that. <laughs> no, he will never. Man, that man took three showers afterwards, man. Cleared out his whole house, all of that. Man, Rallo. Hey, man, Rallo, can you dumb the conversation up? Rallo, here's a link. Hey, Rallo. I bet you Rallo could give a good conversation about it, though, if he thought about it. No, I hold on, man. No, man. What happened to Fanny? Fanny got hold on a second. Fanny got kicked off. Oh, oh, that's that is. That's that is. That's that is, Mr. Postman. That's that is. Miss Postman. <laughs> Hell no, that ain't rigged. That's that ass, Miss Postman. Nah, it wasn't rigged. It's called precedent. You can't do that shit. <laughs> That's that ass, Mr. Postman. 
Nah. She ain't got to drop weight or step down. What you mean? Oh, did she got to drop weight from it? She... What about Wade? I don't know what happened. Yeah, she he jumped down her throat about that shit. But didn't do nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say something. Don't do shit, though. Because you know what to do. You know what it is. It's called president. It's precedent. It's precedent. It's precedent. That's what it is. Oh, Wade can't be on it? They kick Wade off? Yeah. That's that ass, Miss Postman. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, said for now, that piece of is some real live '80s ranking. They called it roasting. Now you know what it is. You know what it is. That's hilarious, man. For real. Hey, man, jump on the chat. Here's a link, though. Somebody can talk about it with me. Hey, man. Somebody never wanted to talk philosophy with me again after I said that. Because that's because you know what that is. You get burned at the stake for that shit. <laughs> but I was like, Marie Laveau, let me tell you, what can you do with this shit? I don't want to have, I don't want to have a uh, I don't want to have to do dolls. <laughs> I don't want to have to use dolls. Why I gotta use dolls? I understood why they needed to use dolls for that too. Well, I don't need no damn dolls. I don't need no dolls. It's right there, man. King of Kings. D a dollar sign for non INT. It's right here. Let me get this right here. I don't want to do no dolls, bro. That's just too lump. That's too laborious. There's got to be a way we can simplify that, people. It's right there. Oh, I gave the wrong link. That's why nobody clicked the link today. Aisha, what? I'm telling you, man. I hey, dude, I study voodoo. I definitely study voodoo now. You, I, man, I was in New Orleans for four years. You know, damn. I lived in New Orleans for five years. If you didn't think I was gonna spend, I was gonna study voodoo in five years of being in New Orleans. Oh man, you kidding me? Man, I read, I read a whole bunch of books, <laughs> and I tried to figure out how it works. And I was like, oh, okay, because everybody says it works. So I was like, okay. This, how does this work? Hmm. The way they maintain a slave is to have them think they are slaves in the first place. No, the best way to maintain a slave is to not to think that they're doing it of their own free will. That's the best way. Voodoo. Oh, no, yeah, it did. That voodoo didn't work for Regis. She. She. It was she. I don't know if it did or if it didn't. What's up, upper, upper echelon? What's going on, Martin? How you doing today? Man, you know what it is, man. I just took it a little bit off topic, tried to scare the shit out of some people. Yeah, you know what's funny? When I had to go for my um psychiatric, 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 psychiatric. yeah, psychiatric evaluation, right? They asked me a question and I failed, but I'm going to ask you the same question. If you see a baby in a highway, in the middle of the highway with cars going past, Will you go out there and rush through the traffic and save the baby? Yes. Yes. See, I didn't think about that. See, what I asked was, when they asked me the question, I said, so how did the baby get out there in the middle of the traffic? See, I tried to figure out how did the baby get out there. So I started asking questions, and I, apparently I failed because I'm trying to figure out how does a baby get out there in the middle of the traffic? See, I thought they was asking me a trick question. So I'm trying to figure out how did the baby get out there in the middle of the traffic with cars going by and where's the parents and where the baby come from. So apparently that made me a psychopath or something. Well, now you're a little bit non-committal. And here's the thing. The, the instinct you're disassociated is what it, yes, yeah, disassociation. This is, and I'm not a psychiatrist, but I'll give you my, what I think that would mean to me. There's a unity of human beings. And the reason that we immediately react to saving other people is because our own sense of individuality disappears when we see someone in trouble. When we see somebody hungry, the reason that you give them food is you see themselves in you. You know that you're hungry, your hunger, you feel 
you feel concerned about their hunger. If you can look at somebody that is in, that is in need and not give a fuck, you have disassociated yourself from them. You see yourself as a separate individual. And the more you see yourself as an individual and separate from other people, I believe that that makes you more, more likely to be in sociopathic or psychopathic. Because that's how somebody that is truly so, so, a so sociopath sees it. They see everything about themselves. They, everything is about themselves. And they don't really see the, they don't really feel the communication between them and others. They will manipulate other people, but they really don't feel the connection. So for me, when I say absolutely, I would, because I feel as if the baby is me. I feel like if I was that baby, I would want somebody to do that for me. So let me go get that baby. And it would be regardless of what that baby's individual circumstance is. It would be because it was because I only see themselves as me. So let's take for let's take Bill, for example, Bill. And I'm not psychoanalyzing anybody. I'm not a right. But the idea that you can say I'm all down for all black people, but fuck you. I'm riding only with my son. That right there seems to be like he is somebody that would that will say whatever he needs to say to get whatever it is that he needs. And he will get whatever he needs for whoever it is that he associates with himself. So I had one time had an argument, and this is just how I'm thinking. Again, I'm not telling you I'm a psychiatrist or trained in this at all. Oh, yeah, I had an argument one time with my father because I was really, like I was really hurt one time. And he said, son, I love you. And I said to him, and I think I heard his feelings, I said, you only love me because you think of me as part of you. You love me to the extent that I am with you. But if I'm not with you, you don't love me. You love me because I'm your son. You don't love me because I'm Martin. And that's the way that I felt. Right? So, and I'm not saying that's true. I know that my father has true love of me independent of, because he's done so many things for me that he didn't have to do. But that's just, I just remember having that thought at a time that I was in a conflict with him, that it is possible for, for somebody to love you but they really love you because they think of you as their property. But once you are no longer, they no longer associate you with themselves, then, you know, fuck you and whatever happens to you. Yep. So that's the mentality of you're with us or against us. You're either with me or against me. Right? Yep. You're either with me or you're against me. The second a wife is against somebody, fuck you. The sense is that the, your child does something that you don't like or embarrasses you, fuck them too. Right? To, at a certain, that's why some of these people can do incredibly bad things to their own children, where other people would let their their entire lives would you know, and they intimately feel themselves associated with the progress of their children because they truly believe that I live on through my children. And see, that's one of the things you know, some of that my father said. It's like, look, son, you, you live on through your children. When I'm gone, my father lives on through me. I'll live on through you. And I think that that is very, very true and, and not just a in something in beyond a physical level or without. I see some of these words don't even apply. Like there's no real words to specific to really specify the thought. But. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. like, you, have, yeah. So when Bill said that, it's like Bill don't give a shit about black people. No, no, he don't. It, it reminds me of Terrence Crawford when Terrence Crawford said if the um, if the people over here, he like the UK fans better. Like. I looked at that. I said, well, "Well, damn! I don't want to spend my money with you." Then, since you said forget us, that UK fans are better, and that's why he did six thousand on BLK Prime. <laughs> so yeah, you want to be by yourself? Spend your own money on you. Exactly. Where my, where, where Ali is a very different scenario. Ali may gave people, and honestly, man, I think Devin Haney is a different scenario to himself I because think he Devin makes be a lot people. better without his dad. Like, um, yeah. his I feel like his dad. Brings his stock down some. Like Bill, I know Bill trying, oh, trying to do the best way he can, but sometimes you can over ingratiate yourself with people, and you know sometimes it's a little bit too much. Bill, like dial it back some a little bit. Like we was all there. I know I was cheering for Devin and everything when he was trying to get the Cambosis fight, and Bill got to make it over there to Australia. I was happy. I was like, yeah, you know. But then it was like as soon as they got them belts. They start poking their chest out and start feeling like they were better than everybody else now. Like, I'm like, okay. So you let your true self show when that happens right there. But 
in actuality, I mean, it is what it is, man. Bill going to promote the way he going to promote and everything. But I'm kind of glad that I heard um, Blood of Flair. I'll be right back in a second. Okay. Yeah, Blood of Flair just signed with um, Don King. So I'm hoping we get that um, Blair Cobb and AB fight right there. That would be real nice right there. I mean, that's going to be a pretty good fight. And that David Morrell versus Boo Boo Andrade, I hope they go ahead and fa um, finalize that right there. Because David Morrell, he needs a name. Everybody keeps saying, who has he fought? Who has he fought right now? And to be honest, Boo Boo is a good fighter, but I don't got Boo Boo going past four rounds, to be honest with y'all. Like, I only got Boo Boo going past four rounds. Like, Dave Morrell is going to systematically destroy that man. If he thought Benavidez was something, <laughs> Morrell's about to do a whole lot worse. And I feel like PBC, well, y'all know what Adrian Broner say, boy, they make you fake Godzilla over here. You got to fight Godzilla at the PBC. But, honestly, I feel like PBC is getting back at Boo Boo for pulling out that Charlo fight the week of the fight. Because if y'all do remember, remember he pulled out the fight versus Charlo the week of. And since he done came back to the PBC, they gave him that one fight with Desmond Nichols. And then it's David Benavidez, then David Morrell. Yeah, they go ahead. And... Hey, Kyle Cooler, that's what they talk about, man. They talk about Morrell versus Andrade. That's why I said, boy, they trying to get it back in blood out of Andrade or something. Like, oh, you want to pull out on the fight, then you want to come back? Oh, Barbara D, I got him in less than three to four rounds. I'm going to put money on round two, three, and four. But, I mean, one thing we can say, at least Boo Boo ain't scared. It's me again. That's what he said. He said, it's me again. Yeah, I, This fight right here going to take years off his career. So, one thing I can say, I know he's getting paid more than Morrell is because he is like basically the A-side. He is the name. But he's the name that Morrell needs on his resume because Morrell has beat top competition, but everybody said, who has he fought? But Morrell, since his fourth fight, he's been fighting top competition because he's a world champion. He's the WBA um, world champion. Canelo's the super but Morrell is the one that has the mandatories. Canelo don't have the mandatories. And Morrell, he put um, Adios Yabrosi in the hospital with the um, coma. He just took out the African, the African hitman. So it's going to be a great fight. But I think they're trying to get back at Boo Boo for pulling out that, out, out that Charlo fight. Because going from Benavidez to Morrell, that's like getting it back in blood. And I guess Al Heyman trying to get it back from that. But I was just holding it down until you got back, Martin. Thank you, brother. I appreciate hey, you, man. It was a great question, too. Yeah, before I go, though, what do you think about that? You remember Boo Boo pulled out the Charlo fight the week of the fight, right? Um, a long Charlo. time ago? Yeah. Yeah. So now he's at PBC. They got him fighting Benavidez, then Morrell. It's like they, they getting it back in blood, ain't they, Martin? Hey, man. Hey, I I'm, I think, man, salute to Demetrius Andre. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, God, dog, man. That's why I said, I said, Al Heyman, don't forget. Man, man AB God, said, dog. AB you talking about you having to fucking fight, you having to fight Godzilla, God, <laughs> dog. <laughs> yeah. You know well, what I mean? Hell yeah, but I'm going to go ahead and go, though, boy. All right, man. I ain't got to go. Hey, dude, that, is, that is the worst in a single weight class. In an individual work weight class, that may be the worst back to back you could possibly have in all of boxing for two non champ. I mean, to fight, you know, guy, well, I know that Morell got the WBA uh, world champion, but there's a super above it. Um, but God, dog, he pissed off a higher power. That's all I'm saying. Lord. But, uh... Oh, all right, blessing. brother. Thank you, man. Peace and blessings. All right, brother. Hey, man, I always appreciate that, man. Thank you for giving me a chance to get this coffee. Um, the link is in the chat. We can talk anything you want to talk about. I'm okay with. Okay. See, this type of conversation kept King silent, though. This type of conversation kept the dummies away. Did I give you a headache here for boxing? Here for boxing, would you like to talk about this?
Would you like to have a discussion about existential philosophy? Would you? <laughs> would you like to? Or what would you rather do? You want to call me names or something? But fucking phones. Okay. Now, that's why I call you a buffoon. Now, let's get back to Bill Haney, who, who upper echelon set up so nastily. Dog, you cannot beat me in a debate, Bill. And I really kind of feel insulted that you tried. Really kind of felt insulted that you tried. I can't believe y'all. Fanon, quick question. Why hasn't science disproven? Why hasn't? Why science hasn't? disproved free will it has it has disproved well first of all disproval is funny because it's in the eyes of who there's not a choice free of somebody else's consideration at all free choice how can you set a how can you have free choice when there's a limited number of options You should be able to choose anything, but you can't. I can't choose. I can only choose what the options are. So therefore, my choices are always limited by the nature of having to choose. You can't do whatever you want to do, so it's not free. Do you have the ability to contemplate your decisions? Certainly. Free will? You have to define, first of all, you got to define the word. What does it mean to you? What is it? What does free will mean? What is, that's, I, I've been, I asked for years, what does freedom mean? We're free. What does that mean? To be free. Exactly. But free will? No, there's no free will because everything is within a limit. Dude, we're in just... It's like, does your hair have free will? Just because you don't, just because it doesn't know which way it's going to grow. It's a, you know, it's also a stupid conversation to have, really. Because we have decisions that we make, make the best decision. Doesn't matter whether or not it was, whether or not there's no such thing as time. Because also when you're talking about free will, you have to understand that the, the concept of time is a concept. Concept is a, time is a construct. And there are things that exist beyond that. So it's literally just like I said, it's mental masturbation is what this is. Most of it is mental masturbation. The question is, the question, dude, I was going to be sounding nasty. <laughs> My mama listens. My brother calls it mental masturbation, man. So, <laughs> Hey, you know what I mean? And I, for, throughout my life, I've acted like a 14-year-old boy a lot. <laughs> so at the end of the day, man, the thing is, dog, can y'all please support the channel? There's a kid that, w that got in a horrible accident. And, we're, and I, we donated $10,000. We donated, we donated $1,000 to him. So if I can talk about anything that will bring you any value, I will do it today. Because that is going to get something done that I want to get accomplished. And the way that you gauge your intelligence is whether or not you're able to accomplish what your goals are. That's how you know if somebody's intelligent or not, whether or not they're successful or not. What do you want to do? And did you get it done? And did you take the things that you have around you? I personally think one of my greatest testimonies to my intelligence is this YouTube channel. Because God dog, I needed it and I needed it and I needed it. And I was like, I have to find a way to make a living sitting in my living room because I may go to the hospital at any time. I see you, Rick Thames. So let's think. This is my proudest accomplishment. My absolute prou 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 proudest intellectual accomplishment. It's not even intellectual, it's spiritual. I was fresh out of a hospital for a psychiatric episode where I basically, everybody that I was working with knew I wasn't in my right mind. And I knew that I could never really go back. And I knew that I could always make a living, right? I could make a living, I could do this, but I always knew that there was gonna be a problem. 
with the possibility that that could happen again. And it happened again. Right. So I had to say, man, how can I earn a living the rest of my life where I don't have to worry about this? Keeping me from earning a living. And so I was like, I got to find out. And I was learning how to once again, trying to figure out how to be a thief. See, I couldn't figure out how to be an assassin when I was a kid. So I thought I would start breaking into computer systems. I'm going to tell you, I'm not that good a guy. I was like, look, man, I'm desperate. I need to find a way where I can make money. I can do this. Do I? Hey, man, I want to be a hacker. That's why I don't boxing hacker. Dude, I was literally training to be a hacker. So I learned to code. I was learning Linux. I was learning Linux. I was learning Python. I was learning different programming languages while I was writing contracts for the country, the company that I was working for. And then I was building a website and it got complex. And I was like, shit, how do I get past this? How do I get past this? Because I'm not really a detail oriented guy. And I said, you know what? Shit. Let me start a YouTube channel because now I know uploading a video is going to be easy after trying to do all this technical shit. So I learned it. Yeah, I learned it really quick. It was really easy. Learning how to do the technology behind videos became very easy. So then I started working at it and I started making a little money and I was like, oh man, I'm making, make a little money. Let me, I kept going. I kept going. I kept working. I kept working. And then I pretty soon I was like, hold on, man, I'm having, this shit is good because I don't have to leave the house all the time to work. I don't have to deal with the stress. And so I built the channel up in the, in the social movement, you know, the social media movement started growing and it was like what I manifest is, is what I had. And then guess what happened? I had another episode and I went back to the hospital and it happened in front of everybody in YouTube. Well, y'all didn't really see it, but I'll tell you what happened, right? So I tell people what happened. People were making fun of me all over the internet about it. It It's basically like what happened to me in my job, but like a thousand times bigger. But then I was like, you know what you do? You tell the truth. You tell people what happened and you keep working. And so now I'm literally in the situation that I wanted to be in where I can talk about something that I love every day. I can, I can make a couple shekels doing it. I, I have, I got a good sense of self-respect for it. And I know if something goes wrong with me physically and I can't work for six months, I can go away and come back. And there are people that will understand me and, and support me. That was the most, that is an accomplishment that came through manifestation, manifest, manifesting something all at the same time that I dropped trying to be an assassin, a mental assassin and an economic thief. And said, hey, man, no, I got to be constructive in everything that I do and I say and I think. So I built this channel, Fanon International Boxing, really off the idea of black, white, black mass, uh, black faces, white mass and Neely Fuller Jr.'s concept of 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 how to over compensation for racism, white supremacy and being constructive in everything you do, you say and you think. So I've been able to teach. I've been able to teach Neely Fuller Jr.'s message. I've been able to teach many people logic. I've been able to teach people dialectics. I've been able to teach people contracts. I've been able to teach because there are people that literally you can walk away. You understand contracts. And I know I'm doing it for these boxers that they listen. If you listen to me, I'll explain to you what your options are. I'm a Harvard trained negotiation negotiation expert. I'm a Howard Law trained legal expert. I've worked in IT companies for decades and all of that shit was taken away from me because this shit don't always work right. But I'm not in the street. I ain't in the street. I'm right here as what you would say, a public figure. <laughs> Joking. Anyway, what's up, Rick Timms? You froze, brother. Come back, Rick. You froze up. And my guy, he says, sorry to hear that young man was in the accident for the cause. Thank you, Keith Nolan. Blessings to him. Also, from the little I saw, all Bill could do was talk over you and you tried to take, and when you tried to make any point or point out any facts, yeah, he failed miserably. Because I was going to roast your ass after you got off. See, let me explain something, Keith. I still have the bully pulpit. I'm going to use every single solitary advantage that I have. I get to talk for five straight hours to the, to a bunch of people nonstop. And I have the ability to do it. And I have a willing audience 
You can't get out of the fry I'm going to put on your ass if I decide to fry you for five hours. What you going to do? I let him talk for six hours. Sammy Sosa said, ah, Fanon, did you realize when stress was building up and you were getting to the point of having a breakdown? Whenever I start, I know that whenever I start getting angry, but I start seeing, my thing is whenever I start seeing, um, what do you call it, synchronicities. Whenever I start seeing, I know the signs for me now. The signs for me is whenever I start seeing synchronicities. Where I start seeing connections between things happening too quickly, then I'm like, no, okay, it's time to relax. I got to stop. Whatever I'm doing, I got to stop. Whenever I start seeing things like I know something's going to happen and it happens, that's when it's time for me to relax. Because that's my temptation. That's my temptation. My temptation is if I if I can make a prediction and it comes true. That's my prediction. That's that's my temptation. My temptation is if I can if I can will something to happen and it actually happens. Or if I see something take place here and it takes place there and I start seeing too many of those things, then it's time for me to sit back and say, OK, I need to get my mind more healthy. I need to like. I need to get some sleep. I need to not look at YouTube. I need to not focus on these things. I made to listen to just relax. Because when those things start happening, it's because my mind is breaking down. And, and the temptation is just because you think, like my father told me, he said, just because you're crazy don't mean you're wrong. But you're not supposed to be right about those things. You're not supposed to know those things. So whenever you start knowing things you're not supposed to know, like what what one of the telltale signs for Ryan Garcia with me that he needs to slow down is the fact that he's seeing he's starting to realize things. If you're starting to realize things and you know it's true. But you shouldn't know it's true. Your mind's breaking down. There's too much water getting through that dam. So you need to build up that dam. You need to build up that dam. You need to build up the dam. And let's and I'm going to give you an example of it, okay? And I, for anybody that may go through this, you don't don't believe don't do not just believe these people know how the mind works. Okay? They don't. That's why they only that's why they stick medicine in you. Cuz they don't know what they all they know how is to stop the symptoms. They just know how to label it and stop the symptoms. They don't know what it really is. And or if they do, they're not being honest about it. One of the it doesn't matter. So let's just take, for example, that you have a dream, right? A daydream that your cat gets hit by a car. And then a day later, you walk out the house and your cat gets hit by a car. And then the next day, you and something similar to that happens to you like three or four times. And you start noticing it. That's when you need to relax. Don't, the fact that you, the fact that it happened don't pay attention to the fact of whether it's true or not true. The fact that it's true is a problem. The fact that it's true is a problem. Because what you're doing is you're becoming an oracle. Oracles are damaged people whose brains do not allow them to defend themselves against information that they shouldn't be getting access to. It's really like your house is, it's like the pipes in your house are springing leaks. That really is water. The water's real, but it's going to drown you, okay? If you thought about things that shouldn't be coming in your brain, the ones that will hurt you are the things that are true. So you shouldn't be doing that. That's why they tell people don't play with that shit, and you shouldn't play with it. You shouldn't play with it. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous stuff. That's like just like regular information. Like, tell what would happen to you if you knew all of the personal information of Joe Biden and you had it all sitting on your phone. It's not a safe thing. You need to get that shit off your phone. Both somebody from Joe Biden's people come see you for that. Same thing, bro. That's, that's at least how I see it. So if you want to ask me what my warning is, my warning is that any type of thing that 
where my mind starts thinking things and you can all think I'm crazy. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. No, it's not crazy. This dude's about to get arrested. I promise you he's going to get arrested. I promise you he's going to get arrested. There's no way he's not going to get arrested. It's not crazy. I'm right. You think I'm crazy, but I'm right. But still, I shouldn't know it. As an example, Big Dog Willie. Then I see my guy, uh, Rick Timms. What's going on, man? What's up, Anand? How you doing, man? I'm good, brother. I can't complain. What's up with you, man? How are you? Sir? Um, I was, I was talking to my. I'm in the. Actually, I'm in the, in the garage, and my girlfriend's actually working from home. So I'm going. I'm going to. She's actually listening to your program right now. So she's probably feeling embarrassed because I'm bringing her out. But um, I was telling her how. If she listen, she's listening to the Boston community, and she listens to how we talk, and she thinks it's full of shit. And she thinks it's, she thinks it's like basically she's kind of true, honest. And she says basically like a big soap opera for men. So I'm just telling her because <laughs> she with the whole Bill Haney thing, she really she looks at it and she's like, "This guy is full of shit." <laughs> and she Ooh, me or Bill Haney, Bill Haney. Oh, okay. But she she looks at it like it's a soap opera for men. And I yeah. and I, I sit there and I don't want to admit to her that it is, but it kind of is. And um, and I just wanted to say that to you because it's hilarious that um, I get on her for watching her her reality TV shows, but then I go get online and listen to this, and she has the same point to me. And she's like, "This is what you listen to," and um, it's funny to me. So I just want to let you. I just wanted to let you know that. I'm in the I'm in the um in the in the garage, so I'm gonna go back go back in the house, and she's gonna look at me like I'm crazy. But ah, okay, cool. That's what's up. You want me to comment on that or leave it alone? No, no, you can you can comment on it or leave it alone. I just want okay. to. <laughs> All right, brother, get back. Well, to 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 Big Dog Willie's uh to to Big Big Dog Willie's partner. Here's the thing: it's their disagreements, and it's part of and it's part of human experience. It's how we learn debate there's there is there is productive debate there's unproductive debate but still debate is part of the learning process it's what we need as human beings it's no different than any other type of physical activity you need mental activity and it's mental activity it's nothing like other different than you got you need to go for a run well why do you need to go and run because you need to keep your heart healthy why do you need disagreements because a disagreement is disagreement is really cooperative problem solving if it's done the correct way you have a bunch of people that are listening that are deciding trying to decide what the truth are so that's the problem and you have two people that agree to speak with each other to solve the problem and one is going to uh, have a suggestion for the problem the other is going to have another suggestion for the problem and then we come together and we agree we we, we battle it out in the in the audience you have people that are participating from it and they're also going through the argument themselves so it really is a mental exercise that is common to everybody. We argue about whether you're arguing about sports, whether you're arguing about politics. It, the, it's the, it, when it's done right, it is a constructive disagreement that allows to direct the most people to the truth. The problem comes in when people start lying and people start playing games. And people start trying to distract and act like we're not trying to solve a problem. We're just trying to win no matter what. So we're going to change the we're going to change the topic to the topic to the topic. We're going to change top. That's what Bill does. He changes the topic. He goes from this topic to that topic, back to this topic, back to that topic. Because it's not about. It's not about solving the problem. What it's about is impressing the crowd and having the crowd think favorably of him. And and consequently, his son or his son and consequently him, however you divide that. But it's just it's physical activity is what it is. And just so you know, I'm whooping they all of the asses. They can't hoop with me. And that's the problem. <laughs> and and BFTB went out last night and played basketball, literally gave these dudes literally, <laughs> literally played one on 50. And these dudes didn't do a layup. What's going on, Rick Timms? I can't hear you, brother. You're on mute. Okay, what's up? Oh uh, no, man. Uh 50 on one with BF and, and uh a Willie girlfriend uh makes an excellent point, man. You know, uh that, that soap opera word is, is is a good um label 
uh, with a lot of this YouTube boxing world because uh, it's a whole bunch of girly men that grace this platform, man. So you you gonna get a lot of feminine energy from from grown men, and I think that's what uh Willie's girlfriend is 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 is, is talking about. Hey, uh. I just got this one question for you before I get out your way, man, because I got to go get a uh, new tire. I had a flat this morning. Yes, sir. Uh, Floyd Schofield fighting today, man, in Vegas. Um, Good old Kid Austin. Yes, sir. So, man, I, I like Kid Austin a lot. He's a very, very big 135-pounder, young brother, like 21 years old. And he's he's facing his his best competition. This uh Dominican guy, uh Suro. And I was uh digging up uh Suro, checking him out the other day, uh for none. And he's a very very uh quality opponent for uh Kid Austin. Um, he's twenty three. He has one loss, but that one loss is is kind of iffy to me, man. He he's a he's a um got a pretty good knockout percentage. But his one loss, one loss to this uh Starlin guy two fights ago. What happened to him? He lost. He lost three points down the stretch. Okay, he lost. He lost a point in the night round for for low blow. Then he lost two points in the in the final tenth round for biting, literally biting his opponent. And he's ranked number sixty two in the world. Uh, Kid Austin is ranked like 107 in the world, and this this uh box uh I box mean. rig rankings. Oh, so, so okay. Oh, uh, my question you know is, you know me and your history with box rig <laughs> out here, right out here talking about box rig rankings. But go ahead, yeah, man. yeah, we we rocking with box rig today, man. Uh, so, but my my uh my point is, to me for someone to lose a point in the ninth round for low blow and to lose two points in the 10th round for biting and then you lose on the scorecards by one and two points on all three cards that that shows me that number one you, you you're nasty you, you're real aggressive you, you you got some dirty dog in you but it also shows me that you have you you're somewhat emotionally unstable you know, I don't know if the other guy was getting to him good. You know, he was undefeated. He saw his his old about to go, but that that showed me. You know, he he's young and he just got a little out of character there. So, what's your take on why would somebody go to that length down the stretch in a close fight when? You're, you're low blowing and you're biting somebody. I say he got a little emotionally out of control there. Yeah, man, that dude is just, he didn't have his wits about him. Like you breaking down, you scared. You see, like, I mean, what would make somebody bite somebody in a boxing ring, man? You scared. You feeling like this man's getting the best of you and you just ain't man enough to just fight him fair. So you start cheating. You start doing shit. That's why most people cheat. That's why they lie. That's why they do all this other kind of stuff. Because you feel like you don't know if you're going to win and you're going to try to do whatever you can do to do it. And you know, I mean, it's just, you know, it's like mm -hmm. you say female tendencies. I mean, honestly, man, I know a whole lot of women that don't act like that. But, you know, I just say just he's a punk, man. Like you're going to that you just dirty. You don't have self, you don't have respect for other people. You don't have you don't even have respect for yourself because you sitting out here biting and doing things that you know people are gonna be looking at you like, man, what's wrong with you? You know what I mean? So like don't don't you have don't you have like don't you know what people are gonna think of you when you do this? Well, I don't give a shit, whatever. You know what I mean? That that's all I can say, man. But I, I'm glad you highlighted that he's fighting tonight. Um, the kid yeah. Austin's fighting. Cause actually, man, he fights out of the town I live. He, you know, he comes out the same town I live in. So, you know, I mm -hmm. should be you know, supporting a kid Austin a little bit more heavily, man. But I'm looking forward to him at 135 and at 140 pounds. And see the kid that good? Would you say he was ranked by Box Rec? Box Rec have Kid Austin ranked 107. Ain't no 107 lightweights in this world better than Kid Austin. They just is waiting. To, he just waiting to come up. Ain't no 107 people better than him. That's why well, I take those those particular rankings with a grain of salt. Yeah, 107 well, of them. 
Ain't no 107 <laughs> fighters better than Kid Austin. I don't think there may not be 107 fighters on this planet better than Kid. Well, because if you do top 10 in every division, then maybe. Maybe there's, maybe if you look at all boxers, he's in the top 100, top 200 boxers in the world. But in that weight mm -hmm. class, no way is he a number 100. No, no way is he below a 100, man. You well, know, this is a this is a very good uptick in competition for him because his past three, four, five opponents were all ranked 700, 400, 600. So this uh, Dominican Suro guy is ranked number 62. So he 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 win the night. You know, he, he should get a little bit more pull and maybe a bigger name his his next his next bout because he was 16 and what 16 and oh 16 and one 15 knockouts something like that so mm -hmm. it, it and, and his dad had been speaking up on trying to get him a better fight getting he been he been saying some bigger names lately so this uh dominican guy is gonna be a good test and i'm, I'm looking forward to see what all uh, young young floyd gonna be able to do tonight man it's it's a texas thing you know he from jersey but you know he live out there by you now so he, he's another oh, one of y'all he he's, he's from jersey Huh? Okay, that's what's up. But I'm gonna pay attention to him now. He's on the zone, right? Um, I think ESPN. Oh, really? One or the other. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. All right, I'm. Uh, let me look at it. Let me look at it. Yeah, go and check that out, man. Let me go and get up here to this tire shop and go get this tire, man. I'm gonna holler. Oh, the undercard of something. All right, brother. I don't even see it listed. All right, brother, I get back. Phoenix the Assassin, what's up, man? You're on Phoenix the Assassin. Oh yeah, how's it going, man? I'm good. Give me a second. Three seventy said, "Nah, bro, school is highly overrated." Who rated it? What is it rated? What is school rated? But go ahead, man. I'm sorry, brother. What, so what's on your mind, Phoenix? And all good. But yeah, uh, I was thinking about um, a little bit of what you touched on, like uh, as far as Bill and his uh, relationship with the black community and everything. And, you know, like at, le at least for, for me personally, I, I, I feel that's true. Like he don't really have that connection with us, um, like from the way that you know, he's been moving. Because what really, what really got me on that as far as they're all concerned, like with uh, with Bill and Devin, is like early on, like uh, I think Upper Echelon, when he was on, was talking about it, like when uh, Devin was coming up, like, yeah, he's the dream, you know. I, I was, I, like, he's one of those guys up and comers where it's like, oh, this guy looks like he could be something one day. And then, like you see, he's getting better opposition going on. And, now, after the Gamboa fight, it kind of dropped off for me. I'm like, yeah, he's good, but I don't know if he's going to be like, you know, at the top. But then it got to a point where it's like it was a complete 180. And because he, he seemed like, a, you know, like the, I, I don't know the exact word for it, but it's like, man, this is this is a guy who's positive. He could be a role model. He he He's moving good. He don't really seem to be talking trash disrespectful you know he's letting the skills talk for him and everything like that but then like the 180 and it's just like damn you know like he went from perceivably stand-up guy to you know want to be gangster or something like that because like, he, he was like cool. devin. oh devin <laughs> oh devin you know like like with that with that whole thing and then on top of that like with his father's influence it seemed like Cause like I don't know if you peeped it in that second press conference, but it seemed like that for the most part it was kind of respectful, right? Like at least when Devin and Ryan was talking, and then when Bill finally got the mic and he started talking trash, then it's like Devin decided, oh, let me talk trash too, right? And it's like it's like he he got his own thing that. He don't really go into that disrespectful stuff, but as soon as his dad hop on and start doing it, then it's like it, it almost feels like he's trying to bandwagon on it, like you know, gain more approval from his father for putting on that type of persona in the public eye. Cause like it wasn't like that before. Cause you remember like with the Lomachenko fight, like the show just came out of nowhere, right? 
like they, they'd been respectful with each other and all the interviews and everything leading up to that. And then all of a sudden, you know, what you, you know, throwing them halfway across the podium for. So I, like with all that, like, at least for me as an African-American, like looking at how they moving like that, then at the same time, tearing down someone like Tank, when, when we see like, and it's not like Tank, you know, go around just, you know, constantly talking about like the struggles he went through, like people know, you know, and we see the hard work that he's put in to go ahead and rise up from that. And it's like, just because, and I think it's like the whole thing people say about them basically trying to copy, you know, Tank. It's like Tank is genuine and authentic. Like he came from something like that, wrote, rose up out of it, you know, like, for a black man in America who in them who's in that situation growing up, like the chances of getting out of that, and making something of yourself, that's not something that's like an anomaly, you know. And that's something that, you know, for him to be able to make it out of that, that's something huge. And the fact that they just keep on shitting on it while at the same time trying to build Devin up like that from, you know, all his tattoos and having like this bad boy thing, like that's what you're supposed to be in. You know, being disrespectful with opponents and all this and that. It's like, man, y'all, like, you can't, like you said, the whole fake it to the make it thing. It it ain't it ain't working for them. Because eventually they're going to get to a point where it can't be faked anymore. Me personally, I kind of feel like that's one reason why the fight ain't happened. Because if it happened and Devin looked bad, then it kind of killed his stuff. And they can't really look at maybe get into a big fight again because all the lies they done told and the way they went about everything with trying to tear Tank down and then build themselves up as they, you know? So I, that's why I kind of feel like if it does happen, it's going to be like maybe when they feel like they've reached their financial peak and there's no other option but to fight Tank for that money they're looking for. And that's just kind of the way I've been looking at it with everything that's been going on lately. I don't know if you've been feeling that same way or if you wanted to share your thoughts on that, but that's what I had. All right, brother. Yeah, I'll share my thoughts on it. All right. Thank you, Phoenix Assassin. Thank yeah, you, brother. For sure. Yes, sir. Um, here's my thoughts on it. Uh, as far as the black community goes, um, there's a lot of competition out there. And you really do have to be the best to secure it. Just you just have to be the best. And even if you are the best, that don't mean you're gonna get it like that. You know, I just think it's my my take on the whole situation is that Bill just had a plan from for 17 years. He had a plan. And he and he and his son have been executing this superstar boxing plan for a long time. And they have the money. They had the money and the wherewithal and the connections to get Devin known and to get him around the most famous people in boxing from the beginning. But. You can't sit up and tell, you can't keep pissing on people's foreheads and tell them it's rain, tell them it's raining. You know? You can't keep talking about you can't you tear down somebody that has a fan base, their fan base is not gonna like you. What can I say? And the and you can definitely turn people off. You can have good you, like you can have you can promote yourself in a way where you isolate yourself from people. And Bill isolates himself from people because Bill's not like a normal dude. Bill will literally get like, I'm a boxing fan and I got, I get pressure from Bill Haney. Bill Haney got on my channel and called me a liar. Wasn't a smart move at all. It was a bad move for him. It was a bad, bad move for him. Bad move that he shouldn't, do, shouldn't have done. Because not only did he get a conversation where it made me look, he tried to accuse me of lying. I made him look like he lied. And in fact, I didn't, I made him lie. Cause he said, what did he say? He on a, on a bad lie. 
He said Mike Stafford was a referee. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? And see, you guys may think that that's very small. But it's not small to a lot of people. Again, there are people that a lot of people don't think black people are highly intelligent. We are highly, 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 highly intelligent. There's a lot of people that will never say anything, but they realize and heard Bill Haney say that Mike Stafford was in the ring as a, as a, as a referee. And I said he was in the ring as a referee. He said, yeah, Adrian Bronner only jumped in there. He was the end. Then Mike Stafford jumped in there to get him out. Floyd and my, and they were in there as a referee. And I said, man, are you sure he's a referee? He's like, yes, he was a referee. And then what did I do? I went back to the tape that I had right there and said, why is he outside the ring? If he's a referee, it doesn't look like he's a referee there. He didn't get in the ring until till Floyd started grabbing Gervonta, which does what? It bolsters Gervonta Davis's story that Floyd was grabbing on him. Why would you come on the channel and do that? Like, I'm telling you, don't come here. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. I went through that tape, every second of that tape, for a week. I know exactly what that tape shows. I know the exact second the tape, tape shows it. Why would you tell a story like that right in front of everybody? And then, and then you have to say, oh, I don't know what he was doing in there. Hold on, Bill. You said he was a referee before. Now you say you don't know. Which one is it? Then Bill asked me with the title, listen to this ridiculous thing Bill did. Why would you do this? Why would you do it? To not even just, to me. Oh, if that was my son, I would be like, son, why would you do that? You said, why would you do it? Why would you say, why would you ask me to show you two punches that are on the tape. Why would you do it? Because now you're on tape. Now you're literally there having admit that you just lied. And the only thing I need to impeach you is to get you to lie. And you lied for no good reason. For no good reason. It was a bad argument because you just want to win the argument. And when you just want to win the argument and you don't want to actually accomplish something, it makes you, it makes it, it's rough on you. Why would you do it? Why would you? I forgot what the original point that I was going to, there was a point that I was going to make because there's something else he said. Something, oh. He, we're talking about the title, Gervonta Davis's title. Now, anybody who wants to know how to debate somebody, never do this. Don't joke when we're not in a comedy fest. We're having a debate, man. We're not, this is not showtime at the Apollo where people know that you can crack a joke, but you ain't serious. You're in a debate where people want facts. You ask me what title Gervonta Davis won. I said, he said, is it the is it the JV belt? I said, no, it's not the JV belt. It's, uh, his answer, he asked me a question, which one was it? Now watch this tactic. Watch this tactic. He gave me a false choice. Bill, do you think you're ever going to get away with giving me a false choice? Which belt did he have? The super or, or the JV belt? You think you're being cute. Because I got to answer one or the other, right? No, my answer is neither. What do you mean? I said neither. My answer to that question, Bill, was neither. He doesn't have the JV belt nor the super belt. 
What he has is the WBA world title. And he said, what you mean? I said, that's the name of the title. That's the name of his belt. You don't want, you don't know the name of his belt? Well, which one was it? This or that? And I kept saying again, he answered the same thing. He did the same thing like three times, like I was going to change my answer or something. Because you ask the question five times, that's another technique. My dad taught me that one. If you ask the same question 10 times, somebody will eventually give you what you want. I'm not, you can add, he could have asked me that question 60 times. I would have said the same thing. Neither. Neither. Gervonta Davis is the WBA world champion. That's not a JV belt. That's the world title. If you call the WBA world title a JV belt, then, De then Devin held a JV belt when, 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 when Tiafimo Lopez was champion. And we could have went down that road and he would have got fried going down that road too. But what happens is now getting back to the point to the, what you asked me, Phoenix Assassin. The problem is, is that for every one of you jokesters, for every one of you jokesters, there's at least three people that are trying to understand who are really endeavoring to understand what's going on. And you're going to, and you can think you won, but we don't really know who won or who lost. Because again, Bill told you what he was really doing. Bill wasn't talking to me. Bill was talking to everybody in the audience. He wasn't interested in me and whether I told him the truth or not, or what I thought, or whether I liked his son or not, or whether I was being mean to his son or not. He didn't care. He told you he didn't care. He told you all I care about is talking to this audience here. Hey, can we get some callers? Can I talk to some callers? And he put me in a position of having to tell him, no, get out, go away. Because if I really was... If you didn't take advantage of the fact that he was a famous person that a lot of people knows, I would have told him, go. No, no, you can't. See you later. Like I tell everybody else, when King starts talking to the audience or Rollo starts talking to the audience or anybody else starts talking, I always tell him no. But I told Bill, yes, because Bill took advantage of his celebrity. And I said, OK, no worries. You shouldn't have wanted you should want to get off. And then he gave three or four more people. And I think he may have went for like maybe one for, what do you think he went, one for five or something? He may have drew with Tim. He probably took got a draw with Rick Tims. I think he took an L to upper echelon. He got a win against, against, against Shubang. But then I jumped in there and beat him twice, a third time, and a fourth time. Just to make sure we kept the entire thing straight. I don't know why. You all will not understand this. Black people think, we think for ourselves, you're not going to be able to manipulate us for long. You're not going to be able to manipulate us for long. We may do what we have to do, but we ain't going to trust you. Black people are some of the most distrusting people that there is on the face of this earth, especially black Americans. We don't trust them. We don't trust black people. We don't trust white people. We don't trust the government. We don't trust nobody. We only trust the almighty dollar. We trust that that money spends. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you're not going to be able to trick these people all day. And you got to stop. That's where I think he rests with the black community. But again, people underestimated. We think if you think every black person's in the ghetto, that's because you never left the ghetto. If you, you will be shocked at the number, if you don't pay attention to what they say in the media about us and what we say to, about each other in the media, you will be astonished with the number of well-educated, fully functioning, mature black Americans that there are. We have tens of millions of them. You think that you can keep speaking to for the lack of a better phrase, the lowest common denominator. And you can get away with that shit in a barbershop. The, nobody in the barbershop can get away with that with me. Nobody can. Without a, I guarantee you, because you know what I'm going to do in the barbershop? If you start cussing, I start cussing. If you want to use tricks, I'll use tricks. I will bring the topic back. I'll get you so damn mad you want to fight. And guess what? I can fight.
So you're not going to want to get too, you going to, you'll be a little hesitant about that too. I am full fledged black man, homie. And Bill tries to convince people that I'm not. I'm every bit as black as he is. And matter of fact, I've been black longer than him. And he's a young man to me. He's a young man. It's a little brother to me. Bill, you a little brother to me. You're not a big brother to me. You're a big brother to them niggas. Just get it straight. My, you know who's a big brother? I know there's some cats big brother. Leonard Ellerby is a big brother to me because he's older than me. He's like 60. You know, he's he's close to it. He's a big brother. He's older, right? That'd be big brother right there. If you 52, 53, you're not my big brother. You're my little brother. I earn this. I earn this. BFTB is my little brother. That's my little brother. KO Boxing, that's my little brother. Little brother. Little brother. Not like little like less, but KQKC, that's a big brother to me. KQ, KQKC. He couldn't beat me in a debate saves life, but, you know, neither can my brother. Now, Bill is older than 44. Bill is in his 50s, man. Matter of fact, I can tell you how old he is. I think he's in his 50s. Nineteen ninety three was when he got arrested in nineteen ninety three. I don't does it have his age in this thing? He was at least twenty one in nineteen ninety three. And how that was thirty he's fifty years old. He's at least fifty because he was twenty one in nineteen ninety three. He was at least twenty one in nineteen ninety three. In 1993, what was I? 24 in 1993. I was 24 in 1993. He was charged as an adult. So he was at least 18, but he was older than 18. Let's just say he was 21. In 1993. He was at least 18 in 1993. So the youngest that he is, is... 1993 was what 30 years ago he the youngest that he is is 48 that's the youngest he is because he would have got charged as a minor if he was 17 but let's assume he was 21 and give him three years on that which would make him 51 he's somewhere around there he's like 51 he's like 51 yeah you guys are nephews to me you're you're, you're young to me i've already been through the 30s man i was through the 30s 20 years ago it's not a fair fight, man. I'm telling you, it's not a fair fight. Somebody told me that in law school one time, man. He was like 10 years older than me. And he was like, I would try to debate him. I would be debating him and I'd be debating him. He was a 5%er out of New York. And he was like, you will never beat me in a debate. I'm like, no, he's like, born in 1979? If he was born in 1979, in 1993, he would have been how old in 1993? If he was born in 1979... He got a federal charge as an adult in 1953, in 1993. That's, thir that's 14 years later. He did not get charged as an adult at 14 years old. Here, it's right here. Well, it's, it is United States plaintiff appellee and uh, Cardell versus Haney defendants. Uh, Sixth Circuit search in 1995, 1994. And he was arrested in 1993. So no, he's not born in 1979. The earliest he would be born if he was charged as an adult is 1975. The earliest he would have been born is 1975. He was not 14 during this case. Unless this isn't him. Unless that's not him. Yeah, so he's 44. Hold on. He's born in March of 1979? Then this isn't him then. 
then that case in 1993 is not him then. Okay, so that case is not him. Okay, if that's not him, if this is not him, if this is not him, then this must not be him. What's his name? Is he William E. Haney? Is he William E. Haney? Is he William E. Ha is he William E. Haney? When was Devin born? Devin Devin was born in. How old is Devin was born in two thousand? He was at least 21. So you're saying he was 21 and he had already done a prison bid at 21? No. It's Devin Haney's 25 years old. It's 2024. Devin is 25. The year is 2024. He's born in 1999. He's born in 1999. He was born after Devin. He was born after Bill came out of prison. Look, dude, is this him or not? If this is not him, forgive me. I don't know. I don't think he's 44. 44? He's not 44, bro. Ain't no way in the world he's 44. Ain't no way in the world he's 44. 44? No. But, uh, but hold on. Dude, I know it. He ain't no 44, bro. Hold on. He owed a boxing gym back in 2010. You trying to tell me he held a boxing gym in 2010? He owed a boxing gym and lived in a mansion after he came out of prison in 2010? In 2010, if he's 44 now, he'd have been 30 in 2010. Dude, what is his name? Is it William E. Haney? It's not, dude, is it the circuit of the... If Devin was born in 1990, this is the court case right here. This is the court case right here. William E. Haney appeals convictions of conspiracy for possess and intent to distribute, da da da, aiding and abetting in the position to, dis, to intent to distribute that. This is 1990. This is the appeal. And it's in 1993. And he got arrested on 19, in, in 1992. If in 1992, if Bill Haney was arrested in 1992, he was arrested and he's born in 1979, he was arrested as a 13 year old. He would have been arrested as a 13 year old. And he would have had, and he as a 13 year old would have advised that two black males had purchased one way tickets from Los Angeles to Cincinnati. Da da da. He would have had to purchase a ticket at 13 years old. How's that possible? Dude, he's not 30. He's in his 50s, man. He wasn't moving weight at 13. <laughs> Come on, man. And he's not, he, no, he's like 53, some, somewhere in his 50s. Come on, man. That's just the wrong date they got out of it. That's why you can't believe Google. I have a homie that went in 1994, got out in 2022. Yeah, I mean, look, man, he just, it is what it is. He went to prison. He knows, he said he went to prison, made mistakes, went to prison. But he wasn't, 19, he didn't, he was not buying airplane tickets and moving weight at 13 years old. They didn't say a minor child. <laughs> They didn't pull over a minor child. He was, he was triple, he was traveling under a false name. Dude, I'm telling you, said you don't know how old Devin is. Let you see his birth certificate. You don't know. <laughs> like on Talk Sport, it says Bill was 22 in 1920. Dog, if he was there, you go. So that means in 22, that means he was born in 19. No, that means he's, if he was 22 and 92, that would make him one year younger than me, 53. 
He's 50. Yeah, he's, he's, if he was 22 in, 19, in 1992, he's 53. Yeah, he's, he's a couple years younger than me. Dude, and he ain't been slick a day longer than me. <laughs> now I'm trying to tell you, you don't know how to, man. Come on, man. I mean, it's saying you don't, you can't believe what they say. If somebody, if some, did you ever hear him say he's 44? No, I don't think Devin's 30, but it does make sense that he'd be a little bit. It's possible he's a little older, though. It is very possible that he's a little older, man. Possible. I'm not saying it is. But I'm just saying, you know, it's possible. People lie about their age. He looked like a he looked like a little kid. When did Zab Judah? When I mean I, I doubt that he lied about his age, because man, he's been around Zab Judah and them dudes since he's a little kid, man. Man, he looks 50, every bit of 50 years old, and he got Grecian formula. Man, his hair got gray in that shit. Shit ain't without no color in it, man. <laughs> man, come on, man. Anyway, that wasn't what I brought it up for. If somebody send me your Instagram, Tim. Okay, that's not me. Okay. Google has Bill Haney is not 44 years old. Ain't no way he's 44 years old. Ain't no way he's 44 years old. Ain't no way that man's 44 years old. I know he's not 14... 44 years old from the context clues. Just the way that he speaks. You dig? He ain't 44 saying you dig. You dig? That is not 44. That's 50s. You dig? That's 50s. We say you dig. Some people out there from California say you dig. That's regional and that is that is that's regional and that is in a time frame that you say that. Like that's just cringe. Man, people my age ain't saying cringe. And you knew, and you knew something was wrong with Puffy when he started talking about Cray Cray. Man, the second that P. Diddy said Cray Cray, I was like, oh man, this, this nigga definitely, this dude definitely knob gobbling for sure. I knew that shit about him as soon as he said, you, as soon as he said, as soon as he said it, I knew that. I was like, oh, I didn't know that you was, I didn't know that. I never say you dig. Yeah, you dig. That's older. That's older. And you probably hanging out. With, and he's talking about players, you know, like the old school Ohio players. Dude, he's making references of the Ohio players. Man, that man, that man was not born in 1979. No way was he born in 1979. No way. No way is he born in 19. These are original old school Ohio players. That's the Ohio players, bro. That means his big brother and his mother had them albums. Man, I ain't trying to hear that shit. He ain't no 40. 44? No way. No way is he 44. I'm a, I'm 44 and say you dig. I bet I've been around Army Brat and hung around my uncles and old heads. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. But nah, dog, nah. No, I'm just saying he's not, he's not born in 1979. No way. Dude, he did not get arrested in 1992. He did not get arrested and put in, it, it, it was not facing a federal case. I think this is a federal case. He's not facing a federal a case as an adult at 13 years old and buying his own plane tickets at 13 years old. He went, dude, he got arrested in 1992. He went to jail in 1992. 19, I was 20, I was 20, I was 22 years old in 1992. He's a 90s kid. He's like, you grew up in the 90s. And he even said it. He said, told it to me. He's like, I grew up in the 80s. We grew up in the 80s. We are kind of conscious for the 70s. Bill's at least 50, man. He's at least 50. Anyway, here's a link. He's at least 50. Stop. I mean, y'all can stop that shit. <laughs> He's on his second marriage, too. Come on, man. He's at least 50.
Now there's some William Haney's that died. <laughs> Hell no. He's got gray hair. That's just colored, bro. <laughs> I don't know anybody in my age that doesn't have great hair. Doesn't have any gray hairs. And, and, and nah. Anyway. Jay Hud, it's that's not right, bro. Just it's just not right. Okay, you guys can stop it. I'm sorry. E, uh, I'm sorry. Can we please stop spreading? Hey, no, Keith Nolan, I did not. Sorry. Bill was on was on a tour like a musician trying to do. Oh, I'm sorry. Never, never miss that, brother. My bad. Uh, Bill was on tour like a musician trying to do damage control ever since the tape came out. He was making the rounds to multiple channels, but he didn't think before coming over here. Fanon was like, you thought it was sweet over here? Dog, no, I don't think he knew, dude. Honestly, man, I don't know what the, why, the, why he came. I have, I mean, I have, that was really not smart. That was terrible. Dezus will not push, I mean, even the dudes that do push him don't really... Dog, you want you call me? It was all right to come over here, but actually it's smart to come over here. But in, don't call me a liar, because then I got to do you. You know, you're not gonna call me. A, you, you're not gonna call me a liar, bro. And I mean, you're not gonna call me a liar. You're not gonna even imply it, because I speak white man, dog. I speak white man. Kid, fuck around, keep agitating that dog. Ain't gonna like what you get. Um, yeah, I don't, man, that was crazy. Play the tape. <laughs> hey, man, for real, for real. Where's King today? King ain't show up. Not to interrupt, but but I think you missed my super chat. Oh, man, I'm so sorry, Keith Nolan. And I'm gonna gong you up for that five dollar dollar, Keith. You know you're the man. I'm sorry. <laughs> And please interrupt me. Uh, and and Jorge in the building, thank you, said, here's my donation. Saludos. Saludos to you, sir. Saludos to you. Here's this link for anybody who want to chop it up. I do. I speak white man. I do. I speak white man. I do. I speak passive aggressive women. I speak snake. I speak white man. I speak slick nigga. I don't speak Spanish. Slick nigga I speak. And I definitely don't like it. You start speaking slick, slick nigga to me, where it's going to be a lot of problems. Because I know what to do to slick. Get unslick. Real fast. Get unslick. Real, real fast. They don't know what to do when they're trying to skate and you melt the ice. If you're trying to skate around, I'm going to melt the ice. And, hey, that's another buoy, man. It's another buoy. It's another buoy. It's another buoy, though. It's another buoy. Leo Shang in the building said, play me the tape. I think I missed something. Oh. Yeah, dude, they speak snake. They say it, but they don't say it. Like, trying to question me. Dude, Bill called me Uncle Tom a bunch of times. Called me it a bunch of times. Dude, like, my heart, bro, like, taint. Like, I had that little nigga with me at 14, 13, bro. His mama, his mama and him had to drive to Cincinnati to come get that nigga away from me, bro. Like this is my real little brother. Yeah. Like, like for real, bro. I, like. Did you ever see him spar any of them? Yeah. What happened? Who he sparred? Y'all know what happened, man. I, I don't he know. He sparred uh, Devin, right? And uh. You was there. Hell yeah, I was there. And uh, he sparred in about billion shirt. Javante. Yeah. 
he got right off the plane, was fucking around, and went to the gym and, and sparred Devin. And uh, I was supposed to fight. I was about to fight Sean Porter. We was at Floyd Gym, packed. I'm, I just had weighed in, right? And uh, we went to the gym. It's packed. It's hot. They get in there. Tank hit that nigga. He hit him, boom. Then he hit him again, and he like went out. I jumped in the ring because at the time Devin is seventeen. I'm like, hell no, nah, this is a kid. Hell no, nah, it's gonna it's gonna fall it's gonna fall on us if you know what I mean. If if he really get fucked up like that, so. So what happened was uh, uh, Bill jumped in the ring, his dad, Haney, mm-hmm, jumped in the ring. And then it was about to, be, it was about to go down. It was about billions versus them niggas. It was about to go down. But it calmed down. But I, it calmed down. And um, they got back to working. And they got back to working. Tank, Tank got, got a little bit more uh, uh, um, fatigue and... They have got off, but get off a little bit. But it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like really like getting off. It was just like some good ass work. Mm-hmm. But Dev was getting, he was in more shape. He was in better shape. Tank probably had a couple shots before we got to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, nah, niggas was hanging out in Vegas. Yeah. But um, ain't no excuse. I mean, it was good work, but but that shit would have been over with though. That shit would have been over with. And 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 um. I love everything that Devin's doing. You know, me and me and Bill, we got a nice relationship. So they know I I, I ain't no fake ass well, nigga. BH said that he beat your I think your uncle or your dad for some money. Yeah, because you gotta understand what I'm saying. Once they kept going, Devin got you know, Devin got the best of them. Oh, okay. But in a real fight time with eight ounce gloves on. Pause for a second. Bill Haney said that Adrian Braun was getting in the middle of his business. Million dollars worth of game just said right there that it was Adrian that was that it was Bill Haney that brought out that brought out Adrian Brauner's business. And Adrian Brauner's just responding to Bill bringing up his business. Ain't that funny? Anyway, just note that. Bye. Bye. That's with 16 ounces on headgear. With eight ounces on, no headgear, bro. Bye bye, bro. Bye. That shit would have been over. I forgot I have a video that I need to do because I forgot I had a big video to do. Give me one second. Give me one second. Give me one second. Sorry about that. That was a squirrel. The dogs are barking because there's a squirrel out there. They doing what they supposed to do, man. They're doing what they supposed to do. Hey, LeVar, hey, Maliho Shang said, hey, how can Bill say he wasn't hurt? What he said is he doesn't know that he's hurt. I could have got rid of that shit really easily too. But, and I'll get rid of it for you. I never said I know that he was hurt. I know that Adrian Bronner thought he was hurt. That's all I know. And if the question is that I'm lying, that I have to be giving them fa- false information, the only thing that I said was that Adrian Bronner said it and that Adrian Bronner was in the ring to see it. Do you not remember the first argument they tried it, that they tried that you couldn't see? That Adrian Bronner wasn't even in position to see it? Because Adrian Bronner was behind him? Do you remember that? Now, I need to do something real quick. I'm going to hit the mute button. I'm, I need to count these punches. Because I think I may take that. I may, I may want my $500. Let 
but let me make before I before I take my five hundred dollars. I want to count these punches. Pause, because Marcus Priest. Marcus Priest, how can I help you? Hey, Fanon, what's up, bro? I'm chilling, brother. How can I help you? Hey, I just want to respond. Um, I've been jumping off and on all day because I've been at work. Um, but I know one caller said about uh, Devin Haney and Bill Haney and um, pretty much how, you know, Devin was playing a bad guy or pretty much out of nowhere or trying to be gangster, whatever. I mean, I just look at it as fight promotion. Honestly, you know, because as fans, we really don't know these fighters, you know, in real life, you know, and somebody has to be the antagonist, you know, for Floyd Mayweather was like the best at it, you know, um, and I actually thought for a moment that Floyd was like really an asshole, you know, but like after the fight, you know, he was just so gracious, you know, it was a couple of fights, you know, he cried afterwards, you know, he would always, um, give his opponent that he beat, you know, the utmost praise, you know, and everything. And I felt like it was genuine. Um, so like I was saying, man, it's like, yeah, it's always have to be, like you said, a white hat and a black hat, you know, in a fight to promote it. Cause you know, you want to sell it, you know, at the end of the day, you want people to buy it, but you know, to kind of get a grasp of, you know, what these fighters are in real, real life. I feel like it's kind of hard to do, you know, unless you know, them personally and, Nobody really does. I mean, Errol Spence seems to be like a real genuine dude, you know, in interviews and everything else. And, you know, people hate on him, you know, for <laughs> for what apparent reason. I don't know. You know, so, I mean, it's it's just kind of kind of hard to gauge that. You know, I think that a lot of people, if they really like a fighter, you know, they feel like they got to hate you know, his opposition, you know, or somebody that uh, he may come across one day in a fight or whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Cool, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank, thank you, Marcus. Appreciate you, All right. sir. Yeah. All right, man. Peace. Um, How do I do this? Oh, I think it's this one. No, it's this one. All right. Real quick before I do this, Phoenix the Assassin says, um, this that was me. This Devin stuff is way it is way different from Floyd. Floyd always spoke for himself. Devin follows behind. However, Bill is acting not the same. Um, you know, father like son, man, you're going, you're going to get a lot from your father, man. You raised by your father. Um, and I do believe there's real love there, but that's their love, man. It ain't my love. I don't get to do whatever the fuck I want to do just because I love my son. I'm about to do it in a second. Central one. Thank you for the support said for the community. Thank you. Central one. Thank you. Central one. Thank you for this huge support. Marcus Priest said, for the young brother, thank you for supporting the young man. Like I already said, we already gave him $1,000. It's already been donated, but you guys have really helped make a lot of progress for the channel to donate it to him. So thank you guys so, so, so much. Um, and then Alton said, just showing a little support. Thank you, L. Ray Jones. Thank you so much for that month, for the support, bro. And my mama said, my mama said, I love you. Thank you, mama. I love you too with the big $25 holler from my mama who knows she ain't never got to give me no money because she done raised me and I think she raised me right. The single most influential person in my life easily is my mother. Easily the most influential person in my life is my mother. And you niggas will most definitely be underneath a box fucking with her. So whatever, <laughs> people don't think they, <laughs> anyway, so let's go to see if I could collect my $500 since people are daring people for this. Let's see. I need to ask ahead of time whether or not I'm going to get my money for this if I do it. All right. So this is the cut right here, right here. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's not. It's from like 36 seconds. 
what is this? We're looking at like 36 seconds. We're going to see whether or not, like, how many punches I'm going to count. And I'm going to define punch for you because people don't want to do this. I'm going to define punches. Punch is where you try to hit somebody with your glove. Okay? This is one right here. Because his hand has already came forward. So you know a punch was thrown because his left hand is in the front. So this punch right here is going to be number two. And again, what is the definition, sir, that you're going to bet me this money? The definition of a punch is if you try to hit somebody with your glove. This is a punch. This is a punch. Anytime you direct your glove at that body, that's a punch. Okay? You don't have to fully extend your arm any of that. This is a punch. 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 So we're at one already before this even gets thrown. The lead hand has already been punched, so that's one. See? It's already up there. See? He turns to two. That's two. That's three. That's four, five. That's six. That's seven. That's eight. That's nine. That's ten. That's that's eleven. The one on his back is a punch. That's eleven. That's twelve. And 13. They just landed on the back. That's 13. 14. When he comes up here with the with his left hand. That's 14. Then he throws them. 15. 16. That's a punch. 17. That punch missed. 18. Right there. As we're at 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That's 25 unanswered punches. That is 25 unanswered punches. Can somebody please tell me how many punches that was without Devin throwing one back? Did you see Devin throw a punch? I say 25, you say 26. If the bet is 25 or more, Unanswered punches. That is absolutely correct. Oh, I don't mind. If there, excuse me, sir. If there was 30, then there was 25. If he landed 30 unanswered punches, at a point he landed 25. You know why? Because in order to get to 30, he had to get to 25. So I, if I say he landed 20, he threw, excuse me, not threw, that he not landed, that he threw 25 unanswered, unanswered punches. If I count to 30, I win because he definitely threw 25. I didn't say, I didn't bet, the bet ain't that he only threw 25. That bet will never be paid. Come on and join on. Who wants to count the punches? There's the link. Because before I bet this, before I bet, before I, before I want my $500, I need somebody else to count them. I need a Devin Haney fan to, ca to count them. 
I need a Devin Haney fan. I need somebody beyond, beyond, beyond repute. What is it? Beyond, be, that is, that is beyond, what is it? Repute? Not repute. What is it? What's the word I'm looking for? Reproach. I'm looking for the word reproach. Can I get a, can I get a, can I get a volunteer? Because I'm going to take this tape and I am going to cut it. Man, oh, anybody other than Boxing Hacker. Boxing Hacker is just going to lie. Oh, that's not a punch. That No, that's not a punch. He hit him, but he wasn't really punching. He was really rubbing him. <laughs> he was really rubbing his back when he did this. That's not a, how do we really know what was in his, what do we really, how do we really know what was, what his intent was in his mind? Called Logic Hacker. Log, oh, not the Logic Hacker. Logic Chopper. <laughs> Boxing Hacker's new name is Logic, Logic, Logic Chopper. Ain't that what, hey, where you at, King? I need you counting. Because for real, I want my $500. I want my $500. Man, I heard that. I thought to myself, man, I want that five hundred dollars. I and I'm gonna bring the tape, but I got it. But I'm bringing my own tape. But I'm gonna play my own tape. I'm gonna put the tape up, and have everybody count. <laughs> Matter of fact, if anybody wants to earn a little money, if you want to earn a little money from me, I will pay you. I will pay you, and give you a good. If you could take this little bit of tape and literally put a one, two, three, four, five, six, all of that. <laughs> Boxing hack. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Phoenix said he's a hack for sure. Anyway, I'm fucking up here. Nah, I don't get up here and do that, man. I don't need that. I don't, don't do that, brother. Don't do that. Anyway, more and more call and I get out of here. I had to rub it in, bro. That's 25 unanswered punches at the least. Hey, for now, on, some, uh, on grown man, on some grown man. Pretty much every show you provide a little philosophical nugget that I get to process and use towards improving my stance in manhood and as a father. Just giving you your flowers. Today was fire. Was flat was um fire. Thank you, Cal Coolit. I appreciate you greatly, sir. No, nah, man, because I just because there was a because there was a bet running around from somebody that I respect. But somebody that is in a hole like a mug on this particular argument. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll leave it alone. Let me drop it. Let me drop it. I'll drop it. I'll drop it. Thank y'all so much for your support today. And again, I'm telling you, I have copycats. Okay? Now, again, I want, before you ever fall, before anybody asks you, to do what I did um, before I, before anybody asks you to do what I asked today, you need to, they need to be able to do this. They need to be able to actually show you that the money was donated. They need to be able to prove it ahead of time. Don't let somebody scam you because they will definitely scam you. Because after today, after you guys help so much, they're going to scam you. It's coming. Without a doubt, because they're copycats of the highest order. It, it's it's they they're serious, serious, serious. Certain people are serious copycats. Like if I do something, I guarantee you, somebody else is going to do it. They have no conscience whatsoever, none. Okay, honestly, I I and people will get mad at me. I think that they're on the spectrum. They don't care about lying. They don't see lying the same way you see lying. Kind of like Kyle Porter said. Kyle said, don't you just think that everybody lies and that's just the way that it is in the world? Uh, yes, I do think a, a lot of people lie. But there's different levels of it and different willingness. Well, let me put it, there's a different degrees of willingness. There's different degrees of willingness to do it. And no joke, they will definitely try to get you out your dough. Okay, they will definitely try to get you out your dough. 
They've been lying and tearing down Tank's brand for years. If Tank don't give them a payday, I don't blame them. No, I wouldn't give it to him. I would not give it to him. Not only would I not be surprised if they didn't, I wouldn't. Whatever would you guys keep talking about what everybody wants. I don't believe shit you got to say. What's up, Astro, Upper Echelon? What's going on? And Martin is completely right, people. Just like that woman, Brick Baby, the one that sat there and did the two GoFundMe's and just got caught. People look at this right here and they see Martin doing a good thing and to watch tomorrow. You're going to have everybody wanting the donations and everything right there. That's what people do. But imitation is the highest form of flattery for once. And on that tape that you was just doing, Martin, you forgot that right. When you caught on 25, that right came right before that last shot. So oh, well, 20. let's go back. It was 26 of them. And then you stopped. No worries. No well, worries. I, we just count them. Uh, I got time. There ain't no need to. See, when you got the tape, no need to debate. One, two. No, that's not it yet. It's not yet. It's not it yet. Because see, look. See how Devin is down? When you skip to the next, he's up. Okay, yeah. All right, so one starts here because it is his left hand. Because his left hand is already punching. His, his is right hand is about to punch, his but his left, left hand is, is already contacting him. Yes, so that's it's one. And it's about to be that's two. two. Here come three. That's four. four. Now that's four and five. five. That's four and five. Yeah, that's what I said, five. Yeah, so let me go back so people know the four and the five. The four is the first one, the light one. That is a punch. He pulled yeah. it. He shot at him. That's a he punch. Shot a, he shot a, 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 a range That's finding six. jab. He hit it with a range yeah. finding jab. That's six. Seven with the right hand. Actually, let me back up. Because when he was walking away, he shot him with the, um, a pushing jab. He actually threw hands. several. So, yeah, he actually threw several over there. I've missed a couple of them. One. No, that's not it. It's not it. Actually, I think that's the you know what though? That's the same combination from a different angle, though. Okay. That is the same combination from a different angle, but they started again right here. This. See, that's one, it's two, two. three. I'll count. Four, three. five, uh, four, five. That's a six eight. and a seven and an eight. eight. That's eight right there on the right. Yeah, that's eight. Nine. That's nine. Ten. Ten. The ten was the left. And eleven. Eleven is here. And he grabs on eleven. So this is a good marker. We're at eleven when he first ties him up. So even if we go back, let's just remember that we were at eleven. The punch, the punch that he grabbed was the eleventh. So we don't have to go past. We can remember that marker. That is actually very helpful. It's le it's eleven up to right here. Yep. And we can agree that it's 11 to up to Never. right there. Okay. That's 12 right there. Well, well, well I don't know. Because he paused his head. No, he's pushing him. We'll keep it 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 16. 16. That's 16. 16 when he's bending down. Yep. 16 to the point where we're at 16 when Floyd tries to grab his arm. So we don't have to go past that. We're at 16 when Floyd tries to grab his arm. 17, 18. 18 is the left. Here this is the 19th. Is the left hook to the body is the 19th, and the 20th 20. is the right hook to the body. Yeah. Or the, the one yeah. is the left hook to the chin right there. The left hook come back up. That's 21. 20. No, I don't think that was. I don't think that was a punch. I think he just had his hand there. Let's look. I think his hand doesn't go, doesn't come through. It might have, but I, let's just say 21, but uh, maybe 22, but that's 21 at the least. All right. That is a punch. He stuck his hand out. It's a rage finding jab. Yeah, rage finding jab. That's 22. That's 23. That's 24. That's 25. Oh. You missed the right hand. That's actually could be 27. Yeah, before he threw that left, he popped the right out there again before he threw that left. That's why I was telling you you missed the last time. He You missed that right coming before the left. Yeah, that could be 27. So let's just say it's safe to say somewhere between 25 and 27 punches, depending on whether or not you want to count that, that right hook that came up. And those are unanswered punches. So now what we got to do is we got to see if Devin ever punched. Because it's got to be unanswered. So we have to address the unanswered portion of it. He never threw nothing. He was well, running. Well, let's see when he throws a punch. 
Now that he pushed him off, do you count that? Nah, that was a push with both hands. That's not a punch. He pushed him off. He trying to he, he holding his own right now. <laughs> He's trying to get the hell up out of there. I'm just waiting for the punch. punch. I'm being technical. I'm really trying to wait to see if he punches. No, he ain't punch. <laughs> he holding and grabbing and running. So there's no punches. So if you say this is a punch, but let's go back to this. Let's just assume if we're being overly, we're going to be like really, really careful with it, right? And we say, okay, let's count this shove as a push. How many punches would you take away? Actually, oops. You don't leave. No, dude, you take maybe you, if you take away two punches, but you give the other two, it's a 25. Anyway, you go if you can. And that's not a punch because that literally is a push. That's not a snap. Yeah, he, he didn't even turn his hand over. He was pushing with the side of his wrist. Nobody yeah, he, 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 with his, he basically pushed with his, he made contact with his forearm. Yeah. Matter of fact, yeah, it starts. Yeah, it starts with his forearm. Let's see. Yeah, because he's in. Trying to get him a ball. He really did get his at. Dude, I can't believe I can't believe y'all act like this. Yeah, that's that's Look, out. That's yeah, yeah, that starts from a bend. No, he's pushing out. That's not a punch. That's definitely not a punch. He just keep, contacted that's him. trying to keep a nigga off the ass right there. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That was a push. Um, I would say that's a push. So I would say that that is, but somewhere between, depending What's on seven? you know CompuBox, whether or not you press the button or not. That's somewhere between 24 and 27 unanswered punches. Because then we have to look if there's any break, and there was no break. Now, I know I'm wondering what you would say if the people that want to bet would say is the break. Now, there is no break here. This is a break, right? This right here. From here after this punch, that's a. this is a break. But like, now watch this. This is not a break because they're just they're panning out. He's chasing them. So it's no, dead. look, they're panning out. Watch when the camera goes away. See, the camera moved away. The camera just moved away. I don't think it was no break anyway. I think that he was chasing them down the whole time and still firing as he was chasing. No, I'm you talking. I'm no, I'm talking about. There's no break in the video where you could say oh, it's nah, an nah, edit. Nah, nah. It, it like was people keep saying it's an edited video, but yeah, I mean it's edited, but is it altered? We need it for, we're looking for an in, continuous. And this is continuous. All they did was back up a little bit. That's yeah, that's all. it. They just, yeah, they just zoomed out. This is, con, this is continuous. This is, tell me where there's a break in the video. There's no break in the video until Adrian Broner. And this is the same amount of punches we were counting. Oh, there you got him. That's and this is the break right here. Look, that's the break right there. When they say this is the break. Up. This is the break right here. And there wasn't a break before that since here. Nope. And it was get out of there, Dev. And look, you knew Devin was getting hit with the combo because they hollering, get out of yeah, there, yeah, but, look, look, but let's look at the breaks because I want to talk about whether or not the video broke. This is a break right here. Clearly a break. This is an edit right there. Yeah. I can show you in a video. That is a, that is a piece of tape. That is a piece of uh, video, and then it then it cuts to another piece of video. This is not a cut of video. Different angle. They give it to you at a different angle. That's all. Yeah, this is this is yeah. It's a different camera. It's from a different phone because it's obviously somebody was next to them behind them the first time. But right here, this is completely uncut. It's completely uncut. Oh yeah, it's twenty five unanswered, uncut. It's uncut. What are they? How in the world can you guys say? And there's the next cut. And to tell you this for real, I'll tell you what the seconds was. It was minute. It was thirty. What? Thirty nine. What is that? Forty. It's twenty four straight seconds. It's twenty four straight seconds. And twenty six straight shots. <laughs> yeah, it's twenty four straight seconds. All right, up rush line. I'll get back with you, sir. All right, bro. You have a good one, man. All right, you um, you as well, man. Boxing Hacker, you were going to jump on here. What are you laughing about, man? Oh, let me time your ass out again. I don't want you talking. <laughs> You're going to come out here and make a buffoonerish ass argument. I made up a word for you, son. You're buffoonerish.
<laughs> Your ass is buffoonerif. Buffoonerish. Your buffoonerishness, man. Come on, man. Come on, Logic Jacker, Logic Hacker, Logic, whatever your name is, man, with this dumb shit you be talking. This, I, I, this is, man, this dude used to disrespect me so much and dog, you know, it was funny. There's be this dude that always disrespect me, bro, and acted like I didn't know he was doing it, man. Dude be talking about like smart, dumb niggas. And I'm like, dumb, smart niggas. And I'd be like, man, come on, man. I know full well you talking about me, bro. <laughs> dog, I know full well you talking about me, dog. Come on, man. <laughs> Oh, this should be funny. Drew Laws, how can I help you? Hey, man. Hey. I can't hear you. Y'all can you hear me? You're muffled. All right, come back in a second, man. King, how can I help you? What's up, man? I'm about to get Good off afternoon. my show. Four hey. hours. Hey, did you uh, ever happen to see uh, Amir Khan versus Marcos Maidana? Man, I'm not talking about American and Marcus Maidana. Did you happen to see that fight? Why? Why are you asking? You know me? what happened in round ten of that? Why fight? are you asking me? Let me tell you what happened. No, you, I told you not up. to break news because it's I don't want to have to go check. It's not breaking news, sir. I don't want to have to go check. I'm giving you an example. As what is your I'm point? Doing. No, my, give me your point. My point is that sparring footage is irrelevant. It's but, not irrelevant to the sparring footage. No, it's not. It's not and irrelevant to the sparring footage. I'm going to tell you why it's irrelevant. I'm sorry, sir. If I was going to ask you, did Javante Davis ever spar Devin Haney? Hold on. Hear do me. you think that the sparring, do you think that the sparring tape is relevant to that to establish whether or not they sparred? Just hear me out for you didn't even let me make No, it. I'm not going to cuz you would, you are that's why I went with your conclusion. Your conclusion is flawed. You don't because it's irrelevant. Mind. It's irrelevant to what? I'm making a point. Give you an example. It's relevant of to you said sparring is irrelevant. Tapes are irrelevant. Irrelevant to what issue? That little sparring clip is irrelevant to the overall fight. To the overall fight. That's where I'm not talking about the overall fight. That's not a question. That's not a. That's not an issue. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Well, no, then I don't want to talk to you about it because there is no fight. They're not fighting. They haven't fought, so there is no talk about their fight. There's nothing for it to be relevant or irrelevant to because they're not fighting. Javante Davis is fighting Frank Martin from all we know. And Devin Haney is fighting Ryan, Ryan Garcia for all we know right now. So there is nothing relevant or irrelevant to the fight between Devin Haney and Javante Davis because that doesn't exist. So what's the point you're making by showing the I'm fight? making the point that if somebody bet me 25, if somebody bet me $500 that Javante Davis threw 25 unanswered punches against Devin Haney in that sparring session. Nobody's going to do I that. I could prove that I could prove he did. Nobody's going to do that. That won't make you a rock. He did it. The offer was made on YouTube a couple times yesterday. Nobody's, you not. you ain't a rocket scientist. We can see that. that I'm not a rocket science. Fine. I'm not a rocket scientist. Are you calling me dumb? You of all people? I didn't, I'm not calling you. If you say it doesn't take a rocket science and you tell me I'm not a rocket scientist, rocket scientists are usually used to refer to somebody's intelligence because they're engineers. So they think that engineers are very intelligent. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. That's the phrase. Then you said, I'm not a rocket scientist, which makes me believe that you're saying that I'm not intelligent. You, you. You jumped to conclusion way too quick with whatever. Oh, I, I definitely jumped. No, I definitely jumped to the inference. Now, would you like to tell me that that is irrelevant to the point that I was making? Again, or was it relevant to the point that I was making? I came in here because I don't know why we're still talking about this. Footage. The, I, you don't then ask the question. Don't tell me it's irrelevant if you don't know why. How do you, if you don't know why we're doing it? How would you know whether it's relevant or not? To what we're talking about. If you don't even know what we're talking about. You're speaking from ignorance. I've been listening for the last 20-30 minutes. so I then you If you were listening. Then you would have known why we were talking about it. I just I just think it's time we just let it go. because Never. 
Let it go on your to YouTube channel. And I, I, because you're getting demonetized by playing it, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm not getting demonetized. You told you told us that you're getting demonetized. I'm not getting demonetized. I'm not getting demonetized. Your video. Your video might I, get demonetized. You're live. Don't, yeah. don't worry about it. I'm okay. Don't worry about it. I matter of fact, I don't even think you really care. I just want your channel to if grow. If you care about my demonet, put something in the super chat. Help me out. All it will take is ten dollars. Because once, because you know what it goes. It's say seven thousand. You know how money works. There's seven thousand. The most I'm gonna make out of monetization of a of this live stream from YouTube is about seventy dollars if I'm lucky. From the monetization itself, it's like seventy dollars. That's a lot of money. So all you have to do, no worries, man. So just chip tip ten, and I'll be okay. And that that Bill Haney live would have gotten you like one fifty two hundred. No, Correct? no. It wouldn't have. I can tell you exactly how much it got me. Actually, demonetized. No, uh, no, because it was demonetized. So you talk all that shit like you know something, and it was actually demonetized. So let's go to the Devin Haney, uh, do it to the Bill Haney one, and I will tell you. I do. What is the, is it? Where's the? Oh, it's the seven hour one. So here, let me go to my analytics, which I will not be showing you, and let's see exactly how much I got from. Um, my from the different sources of it. Uh, I got sixty nine dollars for that. Sixty nine to see exactly sixty nine dollars and eighty six cents for a seven hour conversation. That's you know what that is. Can you do the math on how many dollars an hour? I got how much I got paid? Seven, that's ten dollars. I got paid less than the minimum wage. Seventy. That's ten bucks. Mm -hmm. Ten dollars an hour. It waste. It was a waste of time. I mean, this Devin Haney thing. I I think is bringing in money, but I don't know, dude. You don't know shit because you're not making any money doing it. I could be wrong though, dude. How about you shut up? I just told you from YouTube ads. I made sixty. Not. I made seventy dollars. So I'll take the super chats and the cash apps any day. Any day. So I'll talk about what the fuck I want to talk about. How about that? I'm not saying you can't talk about it. I just think it's I mean, a, obviously you're not saying that because I'd have thrown your ass off. It's for saying it. Call it a distraction. Anyway, look, man, you're wasting my time. I've been on here for four hours. You didn't even listen to what we're talking about. You said it was irrelevant. You didn't even know what it was irrelevant to because you didn't know the topic, but you listened and still didn't know the topic. Now you're pocket watching me. Literally. I tell you exactly how much money I made on that video from YouTube ads. And it was $70 for seven fucking hours. I rented my platform out to... For, to Debt for to, to Bill Haney for ten dollars an hour. That's what people get paid working at Seven Eleven. Now, Bill, want to talk about all the money I made? No. And how many views did that do? Let's look. Twelve thousand. Do we? Oh God, you you make me never want to talk to you when you when you try to give me my numbers, bro. I I swear to God, I do. Okay, I never want to talk to you anymore because, oh, actually, hold on. What is this? No, I didn't use the wrong numbers, did I? No, I didn't use the wrong numbers. I used the right numbers. No, this is crazy. This is really crazy. Oh, oops, I think I was wrong. I think I might have made $30 on this shit. I think it may be 30 No web page web page ads. <clears throat> oh no, I'm sorry. Why I made 52 bucks. 17 17 bucks on replay. Yeah, I made 15 bucks for those seven hours. And then I got 17 on replay. And that probably came the 17 bucks on replay came because people put snippets of it on Twitter and people went to it. So no, dude, please stay out of my business with my money. Because that's not a lot of money. It just actually just depressed me. 
and made me think, damn, Bill wasted a lot of my time because he didn't even pay. He got a lot more press out of it than I did. Wouldn't you say? Come on, man. Somebody like Bill coming to your show, I think you... you Doesn't mean shit to me. Be Bill okay. coming to my show. Let me be very clear. Bill coming to my my channel means shit to me. Come on, man. Bill. No, it's why I don't do it. It doesn't make sense to me. That's why I don't do interviews. He's a big personality. In the, in Dude, the he's, I don't give a shit. He's not Denzel fucking Washington. Just out okay? of respect. He's not Denzel Washington. Okay? No. I don't do interviews for that reason. Because most times I listen to the, I think money. And I actually know what I'm doing. Not unlike you who speculate. I actually know what I'm doing. I actually see my analytics. I actually do the predictions and the forecasts and all of that. I'm actually educated and experienced in doing that. And when I saw Bill, I thought, man, I just lost a lot of money. You know why? Because I could have dropped the video. They could have done five, could have done 10,000 views. I could have made $100 on it. So now I have to subtract the $100 from the, uh, let's say, because I would have made, with seven, set may have made $70. I would have done that anyway. I would have done that in three hours or four hours, not the additional three, but now I got to subtract a hundred dollars from that because I was only able to put up one video that day. Bill Haney cost me money. King, he cost me money. Don't you see? He cost me money. He cost me $50 to talk to him. I paid for that conversation. Do you not understand opportunity cost? I understand, but it's Bill Haney, man. It's so it's Bill Haney that cost me money because I usually get somewhere between, I usually make about 70 bucks. I can make 70 bucks. If it's a 5,000 view video, let's just assume more or less I can make 50. Okay, let's just assume it. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Depends on the month, the month, the month. This is early in the year. So the ad rates are not high. Do you know what an ad rate is? Do you know what CPE is? Do you know what CPM is? Yeah. What's CPM? I've heard of it. Different people. What have... is it? I didn't ask if you heard of it. I asked you know what it is. Different people have different CPM. That's how you get your What money. is it? I forgot what it stood for. What is it? What does it do? Decides how much money you get. How? I forgot, but I've heard of it. I'm sure. You, you don't can know what it is then. Shut up. I mean, Just I've say heard... you don't know. Okay, I don't Just know. Stop trying to talk about my money. Because you don't know. You don't know shit about YouTube. You don't know shit about YouTube. I'm listening to you. How much money have you earned on social media? How much money have I earned? How much money have you earned on social media? Uh, no, I don't earn from social media. I work. How much money then? You got a dollar? Give me a general, uh, give me an estimate. Zero dollars. Then shut the fuck up. I'm listening to you, man. Then shut the fuck, dude. Shut the fuck up. I'm talking I'm about YouTube money then. Bill Haney is, is a big personality Dude, in the boxing world. Shut up. You, should you be don't happy. know what you're talking about. Talking to Bill Haney for me is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Okay? Now, sometimes I might want to waste my time because there's some intangible Okay? The intangible benefit is that maybe upper echelon wants to talk to him. Maybe other people want to talk to him. There's specific things that they want to do, and there is some type of content benefit that comes from it. But that's an intangible benefit. I absolutely mopped his ass in a debate, and I told you I could do it. So that's a benefit. But it doesn't have money associated with it. All I did is get the pleasure of beating him in a debate and telling him I beat him and telling him, dog, I'll beat you in, in I'll beat you in a barbershop. I got the joy out of that, but that's what that's me donating my time. But it could have brought you some lo long-term benefits. Like it could have brought you a lot of people. Shut up. Shut up. You're not an expert. 
I'm asking you. Don't you, know. you don't know. You don't know because you don't do it. If I was going to have a conversation, let's say it with BFTB about it, we could have a discussion about it. I could have that discussion with BFTB. I could have that discussion with Boxing Ego. I could have that discussion with Fight Hype. I could have that discussion with Claymore Rain. I could have that discussion with a lot of people, but not you, because you don't do it. Shut up. Stop talking about it, because you don't do it. You've never done it. That's like people telling me what I need to do as a lawyer. You're not one, so shut the fuck up. Hold on. Me and you are talking boxing. We're not boxers. That's not how it works. Sir, then I will talk boxing with you. Boxing. Talk. I do talk boxing with you. If you want to give me your opinion about a boxing match, you can give it to me. But not I dig into PL reports and come up with strategies to improve numbers. Does that mean you can't do that? I'm sure you can do that. I'm too, sorry, sir. You look at PNR reports to come up with things. Do you have it? P and L reports, profit do, and loss. Do reports. you I, do you have do you have one we can in front of you? Front and see. Do you have one in front of you? No, I'm driving then right now. Shut the to. fuck up talking to me. Because you don't have one. You don't have one. You don't have the numbers. If you actually had the numbers and you knew what they meant, then maybe. But you don't have them. So shut up. People want to do that's what Bill tried to push. Oh man, you get so much money talking about Devin. No, I do not. No, I do not. I get money for working my black ass off every day is what it comes from. It comes from me working. I'll be honest with you. My slightly yellow, maybe cream colored ass off. And talking and doing this shit every single solitary day of the year without a break. Okay. I get what I get because I get it. I do the work. I get it because I do the work. If Devin Haney gets credit for the money he makes because he boxed, I get credit for the money I make because I talk. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Thank you very much. I pay more money to Devin Haney than Devin Haney pays me. Because Devin don't own YouTube. He said that was, hey, Wookie said that wasn't the engine, that was the muffler. <laughs> Dog, I don't even know. I think that's funny. Yes, here's the link, man. And then after that, I'm going to roll out of here, man. Because y'all, actually, I'll do overtime because y'all, y'all blessed me, man. Y'all blessed it. You blessed it. Hey, y'all blessed this young man. The channel blessed that young man. Y'all, y'all returned. Y'all, Y'all did a lot, bro. I, I don't even have to release a video today. I probably still will, but I don't even have to. Because you guys, because you guys did, you guys, because you guys did it. Hey, you know what he's trying to say? He's trying, watch this shit. Watch this. Hey, man. We're, I'm going to do the biggest one today. Watch this. Hey, David Williams, are you here? David Williams. David Williams, are you here? If you're here, David Williams, I got to ask you a question. Is this Devin Haney's money or yours? Is this Devin Haney's money or yours? I'm going to wait for an answer. I see you one body in Yahweh. Is this Dev? I need to answer. Somebody answer me, man. I think this is David Williams' money. That's what I think. Right here. So maybe it's David Williams that keeps my lights on. I think it's my light bill for a month. No, it's not. It's not my light bill for a month. But man, it's a damn big dent on paying for these lights for a month. Brand said, had to support the channel and the young man. Thank you, brother. 
Thank you, sir, for that five dollar holler. That thing smoking down that highway while he be while he be getting cooked. Exactly, bro. Kane got that Honda Accord with the spoiler <laughs> and four mufflers. Oh, that's hilarious. What's up, man? One body in Yahweh. I can barely hear you, man. No, nah, I can't hear you. What about now? Barely, barely. Let me look at my volume. Make sure I'm and I'm not. No. Nah. No, man, very, very lightly, man. He's very poor volume. Yeah, I can't hear. I can't, I can't hear anything, bro. I'm sorry. I can't. All right, tomorrow? All right, bet, bet. All right, bet. All right, one more caller and I'll get it. Actually, I got time. I can't lie. I got time. I got a little time today. I got a little time because I appreciate y'all, man. I wonder if I should go get that five hundred dollars though. Ooh, I'm not gonna, but I should. Ooh, just so nobody would just so. Nah, that wouldn't be bad. That'd be a bad move. I five hundred dollars for this kid though. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. JD, how can I help you? I can't hear you, brother. You are a sly fox. I just came up here to say, I love what you're doing. Keep doing it. I can't contribute to the young man right now, but when I get the chance, I will. Um, I like what you did with Bell the other day, man. That was kind of impressive, man. I can't lie. I like how I'm sly. Yeah, man. Well, how am I sly? I can't even say you sly. I say the approach you take with these questions is, is almost to the point where you have to lie. <laughs> Who has to lie? Me or somebody else? No, Bill. Not you. I mean. Oh, okay. Not you. Of course not you, OG. I'm just saying he was up there lying. They're not telling the truth. Multiple fibs. I've been on KO shit for how long arguing with these fools about these motherfuckers lying about what actually happened. Just for this guy to say, you can't really stop Tank. Tank stop himself. What? On what fucking planet does that make any sense? We're talking about the sport of boxing. Y'all said that Tank walked away because he was tired and he had enough. I think he had enough fucking your son up. And enough of you not doing anything to stop it. That's what he had enough of. Man, I'm from a real, real dangerous environment. And I can honestly say, man, them niggas got that money because they wanted to, you know, do something to them to get them off the gym because they had too much pride. I'm going to keep saying it. It was like remorse money. We beat their son up. Even though you pimped him, and we told you not to do it. We put money up. You didn't jump in the ring to save his life. Got mad because somebody did. And now you want to get brolic about it. You know what? Take this money and get the hell out of here, bro. You know what I mean? That's all it boiled down to. And it just behooves me how people will sit on these panels and lie. You know, it, you ask the clearest questions. And instead of just, like, it doesn't take much to tell the truth. I swear it doesn't. It doesn't even hurt. It does not hurt. It, the shit it helps, hurt. actually. It, it don't hurt. It might, it might sting a little bit, but that shit don't hurt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This motherfucker danced around the question like the Harlem Renaissance, man. Yeah. <laughs> like his type dancing. His, man, I know his big toe was sore as a motherfucker. What'd you say? I said, I know his big toe was sore as a motherfucker. <laughs> how much he was tap dancing. Blisters and blemishes and all. Holy shit. But that's why I got up here, OG. I just hey, man, I appreciate you, man. Because, dog, and honestly, thank you, man. Because I was like, 
You call me sly. I'm like, man, I hope this dude don't wind up starting no fire up in here. But I appreciate it, man. Yeah, dog. But what it is, well, let me tell you what it is, man, with it is, man, like, look, bro, Bill is a smart guy, and Bill is always trying to accomplish something. And well, he's just got a lot of errors in his game, man. He's got a lot of errors in his game. Like, it's a lot of errors. It's a lot of holes there, man, a lot of holes. But all right, man, I'll get back with you, sir. Before I go. Yes, sir. All I'm going to say is, Bill's the new age Don King. You know what? He's the new age Don King. That's where the error comes from. Oh no, he's nowhere near Don King level. Man, he talked like him. He might not. She not, not like him. Hell no. Nah. Let he's me tell you, with Don King, you'll never catch Don King with no shit like that. But Don King, man, Don King will start. Dude, let me tell you what Don King will do. You say something to Don King. Don King will take a dictionary and <laughs> slap you in the head with it. You won't even know what he says for five minutes. He'll start talking about Don King, the Americans, the American Revolution. He'll talk about the price of gas in Ohio. He ain't going to, you ain't never going to get Don King to say nothing that Don King don't want to say. Well, You're I not catching Don King in no traps. You're not going to, Don King, Don, man, Don King, one of the most brilliant men. Don King, one of the most br brilliant men you ever going to run into. Well, but he got enough game by himself that he, you ain't trapping Don and shit. Maybe maybe Bill is a poor imitation. I'm sorry to say. No, nah, he's you know what he is? He's kind of like a he's kind of like more like an Eddie Hearn. Oh shit. That, I'm out of here, man. I'm gonna see you later. That, really, that's who I would compare him. I would camera compare him more to an Eddie Hearn. Or more to a Bob Arum. Bob Arum will pull a lie out and not give a shit. He'll just pull a lie out and he'll be like, tomorrow, you know, I know I lied yesterday. Don King, though, Don King's intellect is just hey man, it's just through the roof, really. But all right, brother. Hey, be good, man. <laughs> yeah, man, you as well, sir. Yeah. Okay. All right, brother. I'm sorry. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. That's my take on it anyway. For me, he's like Eddie Hearn. Like Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn don't lie as much as Eddie Hearn used to lie, though. Eddie Hearn slowed that shit down. Eddie Hearn was held over the fire a lot. Edwin Volatine said for the donation. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, sir, for the $5 holler, man. All right, man. One more call and I'm going to get out of here. He said, our bad for now for roasting your guests. I mean, no, nah, man. He was good, man. You know, he meant I, it behooves me. He meant, man, it disturbs me. But you, you know, take the context clue. You know what I mean? Take the context. You don't want to logic hack him, do you? You know, what are you going to logic? Where you at? Boxing hacker. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you, boxing hacker. <laughs> I'm waiting to see what you can make up. And then I'm going to get out of here. What, King came, boxing hacker came. Frequent flyer is not blocked. Frequent flyer is left forever. Frequent flyer. Where is frequent flyer when I need him, dog? Where is frequent flyer when I need him? Where is, where is, where is, Ray Davis when I need him. Ray Davis, we're at you, brother. I need your strength. <laughs> Man, Frequent Flyer is not blocked. Frequent Flyer lying. Frequent Flyer, click the link, Frequent Flyer, so I can unblock you. He was typing his Jamal yesterday. Well, Jamal, click the link. Yeah, he's got two chats. Click the link, Jamal. Come on, Ray Davis, man. Ray! Hey, thank you, Malik. Hey, say for the cause, supporting him. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you, King. Appreciate you, King. Thank you for that support. Hey, man, for real, where's Ray Davis at? Where's Ray Davis at? That's who I want back on the channel. I don't even, I ain't even really looking for Claymore. I'm really looking for Ray. Ray, why you say that wasn't you? What that wasn't you trolling me on Twitter, and then you turned around and started Twitter trolling me on Twitter? Come on, Ray. You said you you said you what? I couldn't scare you off, Ray. I think I scared you off. I think I I think I scared you. I got only a couple more minutes, Ray. And I'm asking you, man. Come on, man. Come on back home. Come on back, Ray. What y'all talking about? Y'all going at each other in the chat.
What is that? Man, y'all are, are chilling. I'm telling you, I really want Ray to come on back, man. Come on, Ray. I, I want to apologize for being mean. Because the battle is over. Really. I apologize. Because, you know, I accused, I thought you guys were like, you know, I, honestly, man, in the back of my head, I kind of thought you guys were being kind of like bots. And you were taking the, you know, you were kind of taking, I thought kind of Bill put a batter in your back. I have to be, tell you the truth. I really did. Thought Bill put a batter in your back. But since the battery showed up himself, and it was really kind of like I told you it would be, not difficult at all. Now I figure like, you know, I can let, I can, I can, that I realize, man, you know, I can't hate the player. I got to hate the game. You know what I mean? Unless you're going to tell me that that wasn't a debate, that wasn't a debate and he really didn't want to debate. Remember when you called me a storyteller, Ray? He called me a storyteller too. Hey, he said Bill put something in their back for non diddy things. <laughs> take, take that, take that. No, for real, man. I kind of hope you guys will come back. What is this? What is this you talking about? One way, one by, one way, one body, Yahweh. What y'all talking about? Oh, he definitely did that. He definitely. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. No, 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 no. But yeah, it is. Yeah, this. Oh man, that was a terrible tweet he did. Anyway, we talking about that last. Oh, why are you talking about? Man, come on, man. Don't you see my neck's a little low? Look, my shit's saggy too. I keep pulling it all up like this. My, you know, I got a little weak neck right here. You know what I mean? A little weak neck. See the paleness? They roasting JD's shirt. Come on, man. Don't, raise, don't roast his shirt, bro. I want one more caller, man. One more caller and I'll get out of here. I had so much fun today. I got to talk about things not related to boxing for a large stretch. Not like old boy. <laughs> hey, is that better? Is that, is that better? Yeah, come on, man. A man, come on, man. <laughs> Y'all killing people out here, man. All right, one more caller, man. Come on, man. I needed one more conversation. I need one more argument today. One more argument today, man, and then I'm out. You at the gym? Oh, okay, that's what's up. I need to go to the gym. Actually, I got to walk today. Man, one more day. I couldn't walk for the last three days. I'm going to take one more day off just to make sure my knee is all the way together. You know, and I got to call my wife to see what time she's getting home today because I am very happy about that. Yeah, thanks, Zenith. All right, man. So we got five more minutes for another caller. I would love a heated debate. I would love the smoke if I can get it. I can't believe you guys lost that debate to debt to BFTB yesterday. I was I was on YouTube because I, I don't listen to guys a lot. But, man, I saw something from KO Boxing. KO said what Bill Haney would. Oh, J.D., come on, man. Don't get mad about that shit, man. Don't get mad about that. Man, I ain't mad. I'm about to start cutting ass up here because Buddy over here look like a burnt mosquito talking shit and all that, bro. You see that? Dude? What's that dude name? Wookie Wookie. You need to take your ass to sleep. And bro over here talking mad shit. Your mic don't even work. Can't even afford a fucking mic, bro. That's the third time you jumped off from all shit and your mic don't work. You talking shit, bro? I will cut your ass. You like a retired battle rapper, bro. Shut up, bro. Stop playing with me. Y'all niggas is bums. Y'all can't rank on me, and I will beat y'all ass in real life. Stop it, bro. That's not what you want. Stick the box and play with something safe. OG, I'll holler at you, bro. <laughs> hey, I got to tell you, he can kick a soliloquy. <laughs> hey, dog, you can come out rapid fire on y'all ass. <laughs> bra, bra, bra. Dog, he ran him off quick, bro. He ran him off quick, bro. Hey, dog, he said, can't rank on you. Can't rank on him, and he beat your ass in real life. Hey, dog, that shit was funny, dog. He fried quick, bro. He cooked quick. He quick. Hey, man, bad boy all day. Thank you, brother. Said, enjoy your content, Martin. Thank you, sir. 
And thank you when you ever, whenever you guys call me Martin, thank you for calling me Martin. Thank you for calling me Martin. Oh my goodness. Thank you for calling me Martin. And thank you so much, man. And thank you guys for supporting the channel today and supporting the cause that we had going on, man. For real, 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 for real. He said, for I'm going to make an example out y'all weird asses. Hey, man, he went, hey, dog, he beat the, hey, he, somebody got to jump up here and do better than that. Hey, man, no joke, man. Hey, dog, hey, I knew when he called me slick, I was like, I was looking at him like, hey. <laughs> he said, you look like a burnt mosquito, man. Come on, man. You got to do something. <laughs> you can't let that man call you no burnt. No, but man, boxing hacker don't want no smoke, man. Box, man, boxing hacker is a little yellow bus kid, man. You know what I mean? But he's on the yellow. He's, let me tell you, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what's up, man? I didn't block little. I didn't. I didn't block uh boxing hacker. What's up, my brother? Shalom? Man, don't nobody take that dude serious, man. When he got upset, his voice got high pitched as a motherfucker, man. Ain't nobody taking that dude seriously, man. And he talking about boxing, man. I'm still undefeated, bro. Like, I'll take that action. I'll take that action. You too big and slow for me, bro. <laughs> talking about you make somebody look like Devin in the sparring footage. You be the Devin in the sparring footage, but the only difference is if I hit you 25 times, you ain't gonna keep standing. But stop threatening people online, bro. That daggone, that, that internet gangster stuff, man, it makes you look weak, bro. It makes you look real weak. And all he was saying was that damn collar looked like it pulled third shift work, bro. It was tired. It was just a tired collar, bro. You know, let that thing rest. <laughs> but I'm gone, man. <laughs> all right. All right, man. Peace, JJ. Hey, thank you, Upper Echelon. All right, man. For real, for real, for real. I got to have one good debate, man, before I, before I end my day, man. And I get to cleaning this house and doing all the husband husbandry shit that I need to be doing. Like I got some sense, you know what I mean? Well, I got to do some husbandry. And honestly, see, hopefully we may may have said. Well, I don't think we did surpass it, but if we did, we came close. Um, yeah, that's cold, man. That's cold. Man, I always catch you at the end of the streams if I catch you. Hey, all right, right, right. Hey, thanks, man. Right, 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 right. Yes, sir. But I don't think I'm going to get any takers, man. I think everybody's at work. It's Friday. You know what it is. Um, OG, do you see? All yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. They got it all up there. Yes, I did see that. Yes, I did see that. Yes, I did. Oh, but you know, the oh, King, they have a budget, King. They have a budget, King. <laughs> Man, I ain't trying to start nothing, dog, but I thought of a very funny joke. Oh, man, I thought of, hey, all right, that's, that's whatever, man, okay. Dog, he's, he, dog, come on, man. I can't do it no more, JD. I can't do it no more, JD. I got to stop. I got to stop. Nah, upper, nah, upper not just going to get away with that shit like that, bro. Upper, bring your ass back up here, Upper. That's crazy, bro. I thought we was cool, Upper. That's crazy, bro. Tired ass collar. Turn your mic on next. Turn your camera on next time. I want to see what you look like. You never turn your camera on. I bet you won't turn your camera on. You turn your camera on, I'm going to hang the shit out you, bro. I got jokes for days for all of y'all. Y'all want to joke with me? I got jokes for days for all you weird looking niggas. I don't care what's going on. Don't play with me, bro. I'm I kind of believe you do, dog. I kind of believe you do. <laughs> I, yo, bro, I'm telling you, bro. Tell Upper Turn this camera on next time. Hey, nah, man, bro, I got to lie, bro. Love, hey, look, it's all jokes. Listen, I just came up here to say I'm a jokester, too. I could take a joke. I don't take none of this shit serious, man. It's just jokes. I love all of y'all, but I will cut y'all ass, bro. <laughs> that simple. If you want to joke with me, you better have some skin. I'm telling you. So, <laughs> hey, I'm man, there's some people you don't joke with, man. I ain't going to lie, dog. I was I was trying to jokes with one dude, man. Dude, this shit, seriously, man, this shit made me laugh, dog. He had me laugh, and I was like, all right, you win. Dog, yeah, and I, yeah. I, 
Dude told me my eyebrows, I had my eye, my eyebrows had a receding hairline. <laughs> bro, I'm that guy you don't joke with, bro. Yeah, I'm there's that. those dudes you don't joke with, dog. Fuck that dude. Man, I'm yeah, there are, dog. There are, dog. And I wouldn't fuck with you. I got the, I trust your sense of humor, dog. I'll switch up and get serious on you. Bro, but a guy bro. with a serious with a sense of humor, you gotta switch it up and get dead serious. Yeah, like yeah, that's what they're gonna have to do. They uh, oh, here's Wookie Wook, man. Wookie Wook, Wookie Wook said something. What's up, Wookie Wook? Hey, what's up, Fanon? What's the ugly ass? And you sound a little bony too, bro. Nah, nah, I, I'm just ain't big like you, bro. Yo ass, yo ass, like you eat all the house, nigga. Yo, <laughs> yo ass, oh, all the house, house bro. Bro, you, bro, yo, your kids ain't all got no snacks, bro. Nigga, that shirt, bro, bro. Bro, that shirt look like it can tow an 18 wheeler, bro. Bro, everything you eat fly right out your fucking stomach, skinny. And ass. everything stay in yours, nigga. Out of here, nigga. <laughs> you bony. <laughs> 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 they have, they have, like, they have like, elbow, bro. The fuck, bro. <laughs> what? What? He caught that <laughs> forehead, bro. JD said he thought we was cool. I don't even know who that is, man. Oh, um, kale shit all the oh, time. Oh man, here go Ruben <laughs> stuttered, bro. This nigga look like. <laughs> I be chopping it with you all the time on KLC. You should be on Doug. You must got a new name then. Yeah, I changed the name. Oh. Hey, man, I don't know new names, man. I don't know yeah. new names. It's JD from before with the red J. Oh, all right. All right. Oh, oh, God, neck in the but, shirt. but I still cut y'all last. I don't give a fuck. Hey, hey, hey. You ain't cutting nothing, hey, bro. Hey, you hey, ain't cutting nothing but hey, a look. steak, bro. Hey, we cool. <laughs> hey, we cool, JD, but hey. That motherfucker hopper tired as hell, my nigga. Man, fuck out of here. <laughs> you don't pull a three hour ship. You don't pull a third ship in that motherfucker, dog. <laughs> Washington dreadlocks, nigga. Oh, these motherfuckers Washington fresh. Oh, they, they look like they smell like my collar, nigga. Fuck. <laughs> my shit don't smell like mildew and ass, bro. That shit look like it smell like mildew and ass, my nigga. That's mildew and ass over there, bro. <laughs> I cut these motherfuckers off. They smell like that. Oh my god. Hey, 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 hey show them the collar. Show them the collar. <laughs> they smell like that, bro. Don't, don't pop the collar. Look, look, don't pop the collar one time, bro. Pop the collar. <laughs> I can't do it. Yo, I'm out oh. for nothing. Y'all have a good day, bro. All right, hey, hey, yo. Hey, I needed that, y'all. Get back, man. I ain't even I gonna lie. I thought that was a sports bra, bro. A sports, right. was a sports bra at first, though, but. Nah. You know. <laughs> bro, it look like you got oversized bonnet on your head. Shut up, bro. <laughs> oversized bonnet. You, are you mad at me because your hairline is back to the middle of your shit? I'm bald, bro. It don't exactly. Matter. Exactly. I'm bald. But that shit look like it's like a busted condom up there, bro. That shit look like it shit like a stretch condom, bro. Fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. We get back, man. All right, y'all. All right, y'all, man. I like that. I like that. You play some Jones, crack some jokes. I'll stay out of that shit. Cause dog, I swear, I thought somebody said, his, "Man, that wife beater was on his third wife." <laughs> <laughs> dog, I hey man, I I appreciate the intelligence and humor, man, and I know I really can't fuck with y'all with that stuff, so I try to stay clear. I can't lie, man. Oh man, I appreciated that, man. I needed that laugh, man. Yeah, it was. Hey man, it was a lot of fun today, man. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot of fun today, man. Thank y'all for the good sense of humor at the end of it. Y'all have a wonderful day, man. Blessings to everybody. Hey man, including and not limited to. Including but not limited to Ray Davis, Claymore Rain, and everybody that I was beefing with before before uh, Bill Haney got bodied. Because, dog, Hanos is dead. Because <laughs> you better believe I clapped the entire Hanos clan. Let me talk my shit for a second. I clapped the entire Hanos clan. So please come back and we can talk about boxing, but you can tuck all that stuff y'all was talking. Okay? I am going to claim my victory. I know y'all sitting there waiting for me to slip. <laughs> Ooh All right, y'all. And with that, I, 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 hey, man, can we get caskets? I didn't get my bill caskets. Can I get my bill caskets?
Can I get my caskets, my Hanos clan caskets? Martin, whoever is going to fight tomorrow in Stockton, let them know. Come say hello to me and Nonito for sure. Anybody that's going to go to the fights tomorrow in Stockton, California. What's Stockton? Stockton, California? Make sure y'all, make sure y'all go check out Rachel and Nonito Nonair for sure. This is the 10 count. And I'm rubbing it in. Mm. <laughs> All right, I'm out. Peace. <laughs>